This is a vast open space in the centre of Athens where even this late into the night uh, yelling, there are people still drinking wine, singing songs, chatting about the day's events, especially that which happened at the Panix itself, where you've come to realise that the words on everyone's lips is that the six heroes who will usher a new sort of uh, generation of labours and see Greece into the future um, have been announced at the Panix and they've received the blessings of the Athenians and then they will travel to other nations to receive their blessings too, to defend the world from some unknown evil. Uh, you, of course, knowing the truth behind this. Um, but I assume you don't interfere with the, the conversations you overhear during the evening? or Not alone, no. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, yeah. You will hear different people say the names of different heroes and start already singing their praises in the, uh, in the Agora there. But um, it's not long, uh, Yarling, before somebody approaches you uh, dressed in immaculate clothing, golden, um, golden threaded blue silks with an interesting sort of um, diadem around her head from which hang the same sort of pierced gold coins that you wear on your own. Um, she narrows her eyes at you from across the room and takes a step closer. And she simply just says the word, are you yelling? Who's asking? I've been sent to fetch a yelling and someone who matches your description. My name is Fryn. I, I work with, um, and she'll lean in to make the word a bit under her breath, and she'll say, Aspasia. And uh, what is your uh, relation to this woman? I, I work for her. I'm eyes and ears, as are many in Athens. She sent me, she entrusted me with a task to retrieve you and bring you to the temple of Trivia, where your compatriots currently wait. The, there, she has something very important she wishes to discuss with you. I, I can't really say more here. All right, well, um, I've got a young one with me. She's uh, currently in bed. I, 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 let me go and tell her to stay put, okay? And then I'll... You're welcome to bring her if you like. You needn't let her out of your sight. Is it safe? It is safe, by all, by all means, of course. <sighs> all right, I'll, um, I'll go get my things. I'll wait here. And uh, indeed she does. She just places her hands across um, her stomach and waits patiently at the corner of the room. Uh, darling, we'll go get Cleo, but um, she'll uh, kind of almost like have a dagger, like, in easy access, like kind of unstrip one from her thigh and like kind of put it okay. in a yeah. more accessible place. Sure thing, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, you, you have a dagger in an accessible place. Uh, <laughs> should the case arise, <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Don't you worry, yelling. So yeah, I'm going to get clear. You'll find that she's still awake. Uh, in direct contra in directly contrary to your orders to go to sleep, she seems to have awoken and found some charcoal from which she draws pictures on the sides of the wall of the agora that you've been entrusted to keep clean for the night by the tavern owner. Cleo, you can't... <sighs> She says, well, well, I do it at home, don't I? So, this this isn't your home. We're here as guests. We, I, I, I don't want to have to pay for this. You always told me tavern owners were pompous nobodies that I could do whatever I want. You always have an answer for everything, right? <laughs> Forget about that. Grab your things. We've got somewhere to go. Okay. okay. She picks up the piece of charcoal. That's all, and she just says, "Yep, I'm ready." Where are we going? We're going home now? Or? I wish. Uh, our friends need our help. Uh, just stay close by, okay? Uh, someone downstairs wants to take us somewhere. That sounds safe, kind of. <laughs> she, like, Yali will kind of show the dagger on easy access, like, don't worry, you're safe with me. And she'll, like, uh, loosen her sleeve and she'll also pull out a dagger. Where she's got it, you're not quite sure. But she seems to be learning. <laughs> <laughs> you're learning quickly, Cleo. Mm, you should see what I've got down the other sleeve. And then she pulls out um, just a, like a wooden cudgel. That's often like a blackjack type thing. <laughs> got this one yesterday. Mm. 
And uh, how did you get those? Oh, you know, sticky fingers. Yarling yeah. gives her like the biggest hug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, sure. And then she pleasantly follows you downstairs. And uh, the woman is still there waiting. This woman whose name is Fryn. Uh, Fryn, uh, we're ready to go. Very well. Uh, follow me. It's not too, lo- not too long of walk, maybe 10 minutes or so. But the town is alive with news today. They're very happy. They shouldn't pay any notice to us walking into the temple district. Uh, please follow me. It won't take too long. And she'll um, sort of nervously start skittering outside the uh, uh, the tavern and through the crowds of people, still drinking their wines and uh, singing the praises of these heroes. Hey, yeah. uh, could you uh, just confirm to me the names of my uh, my friends that you say you have in your temple? Well, I know one is the famed historian Herodotus, at least. I could recognize him from his looks alone. Uh, there was an orc. I'm not sure his name. I'm sorry. Um, and a short fellow, perhaps some kind of beardless gnome or beardless dwarf, rather. Or gnome, I'm not sure. I, I couldn't quite tell. <laughs> Did he have a uh, funny voice? They all had some variation of funny voice, yes. I'll take that. I think you have my friends. All right. Indeed. I, I promise you. Uh, please follow me. And just zooming ahead quickly, you are led uh, past some magnificent temples, uh, feats of construction that you don't see pretty much anywhere else in the world here at the center of worship in Athens. Not just Athena, but Zeus and Artemis and Ares all have amazing statues as you pass through the central avenue of the temple district but you're led down a small side passage alongside some pillars either side of you only about three foot across between two large temples you come to a temple which sees not even any light of sun always in the shadow of all the larger ones more like a circular shrine than anything else tiny and without a statue in the front and without even being raised on a dais you are approaching the shrine of trivia or quite sympathetically labeled the Temple of Trivia, if you could even call it such a thing. Outside, there are two Athenian guards, not a usual installment. In fact, any of the other temples didn't have any guards, especially at this time of the evening. But they stand aside as they see Fryn approach, and she walks straight past them without acknowledging them one bit. Uh, <clears throat> Yarling will just keep kind of a, a gauge on their reactions to us coming in. Um, whether they like go for weapons or kind of if they if they go to kind of stop us instead of her. Yeah, sure, I get you saying. Uh, but luckily, obviously, they're very relaxed in their uh, posture here. It doesn't seem like they're paying much attention actually to what's going on at all. Um, but inside, we'll cut back to the rest of the party. On the inside of this shrine, you've been taken to some sort of large alcove with several seats and a table. On one side sit the three figures, one of which who's brought you here. Her name being Aspasia. Um, I'm not sure if any of you know who Aspasia is at this point, um, and I'm going to say you probably wouldn't, so no. But you certainly know the figures that sort of flank her either side, one of which being Pericles, in the same sort of style as robes of Herodotus, is the blue robes with the intricate Greek designs on the cuffs, the belt, the lower rim. Um, And to the other side, in white robes, holding a gold-plated staff, which... um, commands a huge amount of sort of respect it seems as he holds it sort of um placed in the ground with a sort of constant authority you see uh, the figure pythagoras a balding man with a long beard who um many of you may know to be some sort of renowned wizard but um as before i even continue what they were saying uh, there is a parting in the curtain which separates this from the temple proper and Fryn pokes her head in and says uh, excuse me, ma'am, Aspasia, I, I found Yarling. She's just out here. And Aspasia says, yes, yes, bring her in, please. And sure enough, the curtains are held wide for you, and you still see the familiar faces of your party there, Yarling. Uh, uh, is everything okay here? Yarling, you are not supposed to be discovered. Oh, there goes our escape plan. <laughs> ha ha, very funny. <laughs> Sit down, Yelling. We are discussing recent events. Oh, oh you bought the little one. 
Yes, she's uh, she's growing up fast, though, I must say. And the will turn and say, I'll look after her out here. There's things that are best left to more appropriate ears discussed inside. And she'll put a hand on Cleo's shoulder and she'll uh, take her over to this tiny statue of almost just a one for one scale of a human, which uh, it's easy to assume is probably the god Trivia. Is she still in sight or? Uh, yeah, and if the curtain's not closed, but it is. As soon as you go in, it is drawn. Shout for me, Cleo, okay, if anything happens. And she'll say, I will, don't worry. And she'll. Uh, then go quiet, and but you can hear her constantly badgering. If you're uh, enough, if you're um, sort of when no one's speaking, you can hear several questions come up, which um, are often <laughs> often answered by Friend, but they are questions of strange design that no mortal mind should possibly conceive. But <laughs> Cleo, perhaps not a mere mortal. I don't know what she's. But okay, there you go. Um, so, party, you're greeted to the site of Yelling, who you know you've not seen for about a day by this point, or. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You um, <clears throat> you missed another uh, fun adventure. I'm poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> I say that loud enough, hoping that the people in charge might hear. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, this poison is really, really riding on me. Uh, Pro, without turning to Antigonus, will just say, oh, "Get over it, Antigonus. Uh, you've had worse." And they'll right. turn back to Pythagoras and just say, Pythagoras, you mentioned uh, your old master, Phariseides, and I'm listening. Yes, Phariseides of Cyrus taught me in my earlier years myself, amongst others. He was a very capable teacher. Uh, old man already when I was taught by him. I was... Uh, he was old, I mean, I was just a young boy, but uh, yes, he's, he's, he's a man of great talents, great and dark talents, not talents usually welcome, but to say he would be an amateur would be quite unfair. In fact, I remember one time when Anaspasius puts a hand on his shoulder and says, There'll be, there will be time for your stories, Pythagoras, but first, we would like you to speak to us and... Tell us what you witnessed in Eritrea. We, I was not present at the Phoenix, but I had eyes and ears there. And your mention of this name and what happened is very interesting to us. It matches up with several messages we've received from Eritrea. However, it seems there are many in Athens determined to make it seem like this was not what happened. And we would like to know why. So, in your own words, please... Any of you can tell us what you saw or what happened in this city. Before we do, I would like to say uh, I see no reason for you to have motivation to harm us. Uh, you could have already done so. You knew that we were there. So I am entering into this meeting optimistic. That being said... I do not see the value in sharing information if we do not know who you are and what you intend to do with this information. Of course, you know Pericles. Well, I do. Athens. What are you doing together? We're trying to figure out what happened in Eritrea and why there are people in Athens so determined to not letting the truth come to surface. Okay. And I think that's true, but I'm going to insight it anyway. <laughs> yeah, sure. You can insight it. Oh, I don't that know is... any of you. 21. Uh, 21, yeah, it seems she's being quite sincere. In fact, you seem to have uh, raised her ire a bit by um, questioning her. Mm. She sort of, uh, you can see a sort of pinch in her brow as she sort of um, has to explain to you. You'll have to forgive my uh, Roman friend here. He's more used to, you know, having his voice and opinion matter. <laughs> uh, I understand, but time is of the essence for this information to reveal itself, what say if you you five died and three nights from now, being privy to this information often makes you a target and then the truth dies with you and we're left in the shadows against this ones who would see Athens crumble to the same fate. I understand I'm only skeptical about doing good work in the dark, but your answer satisfied me and we will help. I'm glad to hear it. We are in dire need of your help. Um, yeah, I don't know how much of the conversation we want to do, but Pruitt and anybody else who wants to jump in will then explain in detail 
specifically whatever information he considers militaristically valuable, he will then share what happened to Eritrea with the undead army. Mm -hmm. And you'll see them putting their heads together and whispering things to each other at the most major points of this tale. Uh, some of them look at it too, but only um, Pythagoras seems disinterested as he just sort of spends the time back with his eyes narrowed, studying each and every one of you. Um, and he looks to Herodotus and says, are you sure you've never met me before? I, you look very familiar. I, I, I've never seen you in my life, I'm afraid. But, but I have lost my memory. Does right. That, does that help? Not particularly, no. <laughs> oh. I, I, you've lost your pound fortune. I, I, although we've only met in passing in the past, I always thought you had a keen mind about you, and it, it is a shame to see it lost. Have you, have you taken steps to recover information, or, or reasons why? Was it some magic that's caused this, perhaps? Oh, I can't remember. Um, you remember uh, anything? Well, I remember yesterday. Uh, seeing seeing this conversation going on and uh, Pruitt talking, yeah. uh, Yelling's almost going to shout at Pythagoras. Are we boring you with the dead bodies being flung into castle walls? My dear, nothing bores me concerning magic, but you'll forgive me if I've seen things that would pale, well, that pale as an example. But it is interesting. I apologize if I seem passive. It is Aspasir who has asked me to be here for this. But Aspasir says, do forgive him. He's difficult to impress, especially concerning magic. As we oh. oh, you're a powerful wizard, because I'm a powerful wizard. Yeah, he'll not say it. So I've heard, so I've heard you're powerful. Mind you, it goes to say, how powerful can a wizard be if he's allowed himself to lose his memory? <laughs> right? Am I right, everybody? And he looks from each of you to the one of you, and he's just gauging the room for any laughter, and he says, I, maybe, maybe I'm not right. Maybe I'm being unfair. Right? Sit I, down and listen to my friend. Okay, he wasn't standing up. <laughs> Stand up and sit back down and <laughs> Stand up and the sit down. Pokey, turn yourself around. This I... is what it's all about. Shut up and listen to my friend. Uh, I, I explained yeah, to him be, about the uh, dream last night. Uh, the sure. dream. Yeah. You must understand that we've been spending the best part of this past week traveling here as fast as we could and telling every single person we could in power that this has occurred. We've been met with ridicule. We've been met with disbelief. And to be honest, I'm running out of sympathy for everyone that doesn't listen to our story. So this trivial kind of wish-wash conversation is enough. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, we've that. got the bruises to show it. And he rubs his backside. Well, Pericles leans across and he says, that Antigonus is correct. This is a waste of time. We're not talking about the magic of this man's past when there's pressing events. Please continue. And uh, as Pruitt continues, uh, they'll put their heads together and then they'll say, this man you saw, this large man, are, are you sure you're describing him correctly? It's quite impossible that you saw him. Oh, well, I see him clearly uh, through, um, through Palamedes' eyes. Where is that stupid bird? <laughs> yeah, and he is... In the DM's pocket, as always. <laughs> <laughs> Effectively, uh, whenever you have to ask, he's above you. <laughs> that helps, you know? um, but yeah. At this point, everything is impossible in this story. I don't understand why these details matter at all. What are we doing about this? There was Trojan armor amongst the dead, so it's no surprise if the big one is also familiar. That is fair to say, and... You must apologize for our hankering over details, Antigonus. It is something that we would often find may give us any kind of advantage, this information. Um, and again, we would ask you be patient with us in our understanding of what happened. I'm so, sorry, I, I am poisoned. <laughs> Show the slip. I think he's poisoned. Are you true? I thought you were talking in some kind of... Mm, you are actually poisoned. Yes, I'm <laughs> suffering the effects of poison at the moment. It's not pleasant. You're saying poison is in you right now. <laughs> yes. In my, in my, 
veins. This this bite mark here, it's infected. <laughs> don't, don't tell. And Tacris is like bleeding out on the floor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're telling me <laughs> is that something has bit you and injected poison into that wound into your body. If you're going to heal him, heal him. I think he will recover tomorrow regardless. Yeah, uh, anyway, sure. as I was saying... <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think don't he worry. might die? Don't Try worry about him. He'll be fine. Just <laughs> <laughs> I realize these things are not maybe as familiar to you, but this poison is very serious, and if we don't find someone who can address it, we may be a party of one less. Let's see, well, I suggest you go to any kind of healer will be able to deal with a trivial poison. Do you think you can last another hour or so? I yes, think? it's fine. I just thought that maybe, you know, you guys were... <laughs> That's fine. Keep going. Oh, look at it. Look at it. <laughs> Aren't you a healer? Yes, Yo- but I don't... I forgot. Oh. <laughs> Yarling, Yarling is just not even trying to hide her laughter. <laughs> Picture of you, all five of you sitting there, like I'm fine. And then a minute later, Antigonus is just like seeping. At the end of the story, <laughs> Antigonus is just, just going to slump over the table. <laughs> I'm fine. Honestly. I'm a little bit confused. I, I get like that when I've not eaten. If uh, if if you look, if he's if he's like physically wounded, um, Yarling will do a cure wounds, but I don't know if that will do anything to do with the poison. Doesn't heal the poison, but I'll take it. Yeah. Sure. Right. Um. Let me let me let me just chop on that way so you stop whining. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so as your um, you should finish explaining the story and what you perceive to have happened at Eritrea, um, they'll just sit back and um, they'll put their heads together and talk amongst each other for a minute or so, which is a long time considering that they're not responding to you. And then eventually they'll part their heads and Aspasia will lean forward and say, um, "What do you make of this?" other six heroes that have made themselves known at the Phoenix. They are cowards. They would like to take credit and they would not like to face the threat, which they certainly would have to have seen. They were with us not but an hour before the attack. We tried to dispel these rumors. We stood up when they announced themselves, but only a small crowd. I don't know if word will spread that way. Honestly, my personal opinion of them is low, but if they serve to to calm the masses, then let them do what they are doing. Only make sure that you address the real threat. Well, that is our aim, of course, is to find this threat. <clears throat> you assume to be for cities of Cyrus, which is yet to be proven, of course. We, we can't just jump to conclusions. We need to cite more evidence before we begin a hunt for this man who's been presumed dead for so long. That information came from the Pythia herself. It's Indeed. not something we just assumed randomly. Of course, forgive me. You have obviously been through a lot and this information is well warranted, but as I say, please be patient with us. It's a lot to take in, a lot to understand. And finally having somebody here who's actually been there, well, it's about time we get things absolutely straight. But perhaps having these heroes claim your role is not the worst scenario. Perhaps we let them believe that they are. That way, nobody's targeting you. Nobody, well, whoever is propping up these false heroes believes that we have been played for the fool. And of course, Pericles, Pythagoras and I, we shall treat them as heroes. We shall announce them, we shall anoint them, we shall give them free reign to act as heroes across Greece. And in doing so, we will have fooled whoever is their patron into thinking that they have fooled us. Does that make sense? Yes, well done. Uh, What are you going to do about the threat? Well, that's where you'd come in. As I said, we're in dire need of your help. And we do have information of our own to offer you, of course. We are listening. The leader of Eritrea, it's difficult to presume he wouldn't have known that this would have happened, especially given his scarcity during the attack and lack of words since. But we have, um, well, my eyes and ears across Greece, we have seen him passing through the city of Thebes on his way to Athens. It is a short journey, but we can only presume he will come here to capitalize off the sympathies of well-meaning Athenians. The man has lost his city, he's lost his people, and 
once he arrives in Athens, it will be a difficult task to garner support to interrogate him in any meaningful way, especially since the Athenians seem to have adopted the position that this attack on Eritrea was not of something of magical means, as we now know it was. And this man, did he say how he escaped? And how do you have news that he is alive? We've had word from my spies. They've sent word via the Hermes shrine that they've seen a day as traveling to Athens. But he himself has not made his survival publicly known. Well, perhaps he has to those nearby, but not to myself, not to Pericles, and not to Pythagoras. Not to Athens. Indeed, he strange. believes that he will arrive in Athens I don't know, incognito, perhaps? I'm not sure what he's planning, but as I say, if he arrives, things get much more complicated for us. Hmm. Now, I, as a member of the Athenian nobility and Pericles here and Pythagoras, we cannot ask you to make sure that he does not arrive with his retinue. We cannot ask you to get him off the road and bring him to us um, without letting other Athenians see him. We're not officially allowed to ask this of you because this is an attack on another Athenian noble. What you do in your own time, however, is beyond our control. Hmm. Well, this is the closest thing we have to a lead, as far as I can tell. I would, uh, I would like to get to the bottom of this. It does feel like our burden, if nothing else. Sort of look back to the rest of the party and see what their reaction to this is. As complicated as Roman politics are, I'm getting tired of Greek politics, but this might be the best option. Again, <clears throat> as you do say this, Aspasia seems to have taken some kind of disliking to Pruitt as she sort of narrows her eyes as he talks. Yeah, that's Pruitt. <laughs> <laughs> of course, if you have other matters to attend to, you'll understand. We we'll have to find someone else to undertake this task. I, I thought you might have personal investment in it, given what happened at Eritrea. And the fact we're actually the true heroes. Of course, as the Oracle anointed you. But let's not mention that. In fact, I would even suggest that you go out of your way to apologize to the heroes for your performance at the Phoenix. <laughs> Excuse That's me? That's not going to happen. <laughs> well, consider <No>. it. <laughs> Yarling stands up and like pretty much if she's not stood, she'll stand like in like towering <laughs> over. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> stand up so I can look over you and sit down. <laughs> like, I'll sit down right in front of your her. dominance. <laughs> T-pose. I'll T-pose. <laughs> yeah. So Yarling's the sort of person that creates scenarios so she can do stuff. <laughs> yeah. Draw your weapon so I can tell you to drop it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right. Classic bard move. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Antigonus will say, um, we are not really a party of glory seekers. I don't think that we need to be the heroes, the face of the of the city. In fact, I would kind of deplore it, but um, an apology. Well, we have a lot of pride for what we've been through together so far. Well, it's I would really suggest also not keeping your people in the dark. As much as these other heroes serve to calm the populace, I would start to spread around the story that there is indeed a magical threat. It is not good when the populace does not know anything about what is endangering them. It yes, leads thank to you, bad Pruitt, results. but matters of statecraft, the best left to us three. We do appreciate your input, however. That is very kind. Um, do you believe in the Oracle? Of course. Her teachings? In the Oracle and her teachings, of course. Well, she deemed us the heroes. These crew, if they go out and they take on this evil that we spread and they die, don't you think that will just leave all of Greece in despair? Well, here's my opinion, and it's shared by Pericles. I don't care about your opinion. Very well, I shall keep it to myself then. It's a fact. Mm, yes, but you're seeing things on face value, of course. Why is it that there are six heroes posing as you, and why is it that they're claiming that there was no dead at Eritrea? Is it not more likely that they're part of some sort of mission to dissuade information? Precisely. It, that's why we need to disprove them. Or well, maybe they are dead already. Indeed, it's possible. Speaking I'm not of dead, mm. I honestly could care less about your politics, but there are dead walking around in armor, carrying weapons. Does that yes. not bother anyone else? It would be 
very fortunate if there was a close associate of Pherisides of Cyrus on his way to Athens so that we could talk to him further. Yes, I think that um, we're, our emotions are getting ahead of us between the prophecy and between heroes. I do agree with the council here. I think that let the heroes play out their narrative as much as they can. Perhaps we'll learn more, but tracking down this man and taking care of him before he gets here, this is a this is a good strategy. However, we do have one other pressing matter, and that is, of course, Larkin and Cleo. I don't we know. Our, we have ourselves a um, fallen friend and, of course, a young girl that you've seen here. They, We would like to get them to Argus, their home. I don't know how to make that happen and also deal with this plot at the same time. That is a pressing thing. It must be very hard for you. Darling, please, we don't we don't mean to be insensitive. Um, of course, if you can deliver a dais to us, then perhaps we can send you to Argos as quickly as possible. Pythagoras here is very adept in the manner of teleporting people. I've seen him do it before. It's quite magnificent. That is useful. Oh, Indeed. I saw a scroll of that in here somewhere. I'll stop yeah. looking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's reiterate, you do not have a scroll of teleportation. <laughs> um, so if we can capture... What's his name? Um, Adeus of Eritrea is his name. Adeus. Oh, yes. Uh, if we can capture Adeus, bring him here incognito, and you can teleport us and the, the body and the girl to Argus, and, well, the rest is of the plot. Is this teleporting? Is it, can you do it from a distance? Is the uh, destination, is it set? Can we use it in our quest? And, and Pythagoras will lean, lean forward and say, could you be more clear? What, what are you asking? Would it be possible to uh, teleport us to a dais? And would it be possible to, once we have a dais to teleport us directly where we need to go and not have to worry about him? Uh... Oh, no, so we don't know where he is. Yes, I, I don't. I, I apologize. I need to know where he is to teleport you to that specific location. Okay, well, let us assume that we have found him to avoid him causing a ruckus when coming inside the city of Athens. Could you teleport us directly here with I, him? I, I, would need like to, that? I would need to be with you for that to happen. Mm. And I suppose that is not an option. Uh, if I am seen to... acting against an Athenian leader, it would be very troublesome for me. No, that's. I only wish to know what the options were. Thank you. <clears throat> of course. Um... So I suppose I will, as I can say, um, if you choose to assist us in this task, we can assure you that we can reward you with more than just mere gold. We, we can help you with whatever you seek. Whatever you're here in Greece to, to do, perhaps we can lend our aid. We are quite powerful, though we do prefer subterfuge over pure signs of force. One of our other goals here is to help Herodotus with his memory. Well... Is something we can certainly look into, Pythagoras. Your known magical understanding, perhaps you can converse with him and try and figure out what it is that has robbed him of his memory. And Pythagoras also, gives, uh, given that you seem to be a uh, <laughs> pinnacle of information, we would request some as well. We are looking for a Persian man that is involved with Pandora's box. Pandora's box. <laughs> Surely you jest. This Pandora's. What box. do you know about Pandora's box? Do we look like we're jesting? No, in fact, you don't. Actually, you look quite serious there. I'll at least uh, give you that. Um, of course, Pandora's box was broken, and from it came all the evils of the world. But was it broken or opened? Well, I don't know. I'd only know the myth. Uh, I've heard the myth that it was a vase that was broken. We would appreciate you doing more research, and of course, a monetary reward is never unwelcome. But yes, we will we will take this task. Mm, thank you. Um, and she'll turn to you, Antigonus, and say, "Your role is more complex, I assume, but I, I understand that you um, you worship Prometheus. Is that am I correct in saying that?" When she says that, I look at the reaction of the others on the council. What did they? How do they react when she says that? They both just looking at you. Um, both Pericles and Pythagoras are not members of the clergy of any type of priesthood. Well, of course, um, <laughs> just as a noble cannot ask us to murder another noble, an Athenian cannot worship a titan. 
if you catch my meaning. Certainly, but there was a temple in Athens for some time dedicated to Prometheus until it was burned to the ground, unfortunately. I am aware, yes. And of course, Pericles is here as our head statesman, and he could easily pave the way to reinstating Prometheus as much it would, as it would displease those who worship the Olympians to have a small temple present in Athens. Antigonus at this point kind of still poison stands up a bit and <laughs> feels excited. Uh, <laughs> I would also ask that you stop the hunt for any Promethean worshippers outside the city. Let them be their own. Um, and Pericles will say it is more the Stratagos that go after the the, the Prometheans, but I'll, I'll have words with them. It is a tricky and delicate process, may take some time, but I can see a path to peace with the Prometheans at the very least. He's not the most distasteful of Titans after all. I would ask that you make this a, a high priority, and yes, we will serve you as best we can if you can make this happen. Of course, my other members may have other requests as well, but this whatever is... we can do to help, Aspisi or Cudding say, whatever we can do. I would hesitate to say your wildest dreams, but we do command most of the rule of Athens, and Athens has plentiful means to achieve anything you're looking to desire. Hmm. If it is as simple as Drachne, uh, Pruitt, then we can, of course, compensate you dearly for this. The Parthenon holds more Drachme than you have ever seen, I am soon. I want the place for my family. Easy, easy enough task done. A place for your family? Your family, who are they? We're a group in Argos. Oh, yes. Uh, which group in Argos do you mean? A, a, how many are we talking? <laughs> Before I promise a place for your family, I would just like to hear you use the term so loosely just to apply to hundreds of people. It's not hundreds. I see. Pitch. Around 20. Mm -hmm. yeah, easily enough organized. Not a problem whatsoever. And some place for people who don't have homes to go. Okay, that's a bit more tricky, but something we could have discuss in further detail once once we've got our, our man back with us, a day of Eritrea. I don't have a home. Yeah, I'll... Oh, uh, oh, I don't think I do. You can come stay with us. It's a, it's a group of people who don't have homes. Oh, that sounds nice. <laughs> will, will there be dancing? <laughs> <laughs> there will be lots of dancing, I promise. <laughs> I won't have to pay everyone, will I? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> So you want to make a strip club in ancient Athens. That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. I can get on board with that. I don't know about the rest of you, but I could probably use a rest before we head out to try to capture this man. Yes, it looks like we're staying at the Agora, so... That would be nice, considering that I'm still poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps we can find a temple of healing on the way. Perhaps that would be. <laughs> we kind. need to get some soup. My belly's rumbling. <laughs> so I, I turn around to the uh, the council now after talking to the party. I pull out my um, a, a dagger that's sort of symbolic, and I lay it down, and I say, um, "We will give you our services, and each of us will ask a favor upon return. Many of which you've already been seated for. Monetary reward as well would be kind, and we'll do our best to be your champions in secret. Do we agree mm. to this?" If champions is the word you choose to use, that is fine, yes. <laughs> Didn't even notice I said it. Uh, good, and then I'll do the thing. I'll pluck my finger and hold out my hand to uh, give a contract with, um, I guess, with Pericles and being the one with the most power. Pericles will look at the bleeding finger <laughs> and then I'll look to Aspasia and he'll just give a shrug and she'll say, I think he wants you to touch it, Pericles. <laughs> I wouldn't do the same. He's poisoned. <laughs> that is a fair point but uh, if this is your custom then I, I suppose and he'll reach out his hand and poke your finger I'm not sure 
what <laughs> you want him to do. It's like an orcish thing. You you just take your fingers and you make them bloody and you grab hands with them and ah right okay. Just well, what he, in his nose. Sure, he won't bloody his hand, but he will at least you know shake yours or um you know grab it, whatever have you. That's enough for me. Don't you usually stab the dagger through both hands? <laughs> no, I'm thinking. That's of idea how the Romans do it. I don't know. <laughs> this is how we do it. All right, arrest, and uh, in the morning we will. Of course, I, yes, we need details about. You said towards Thebes. He's towards Thebes. He will be coming on the road from Thebes. That's what we know, at least. Assuming he hasn't diverted, but we do assume he's on his way here. Be careful, though. He does travel with a guard. Fair. Do you know how many in the guard? Mm, I've heard my spies say six or seven, but... And is there any indication that he would have uh, someone who uses magic with him? Mm, we, we can't tell, really, unfortunately. Okay. But do look well, <clears throat> let's go. Should be able to easily find him. Of course, we'll be awaiting on your return. When you have him, make sure that he doesn't have the capability to escape and make himself known in Athens. If he's in Athens and he makes himself known, we would have a much harder time getting him. Oh, uh, Harry, real quick question. So um, while we were in Eritrea, did we get a, any of us get a look at him or do we know what he looks like or no. should we ask that before we leave? <laughs> um, I don't think any of you have ever seen him before. Okay, so Peru will ask that before we leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, before I go. <laughs> Who mm. are we kidding? <laughs> She'll say, uh, you'll know him um, as born as he was when he first came into this world, as bald as he was when he first came into this world. Uh, a simple man in clothing, but um, you should know him by his guard rather than him. He travels with a guard who is blue of skin and quite a large man. Um, so look out for him rather than um, Adeus himself. And show That's a that singular person. guard that is blue and large. Yes. Hmm. To know. One of one of his entourage, of course. Right. Well, that should be easier to spot. Mm. And clothing, is he apt to a certain style? Simple clothing. We've come to know him by him from previous meetings. Do, it, do, do his guard have any distinct markings? <clears throat> one of them is blue. <laughs> On their clothing, do they have ah. any insignias? I, I wouldn't expect so, no. Okay. Okay. Let's head out then. I'm just going to lean into Pruitt. So are you telling me that this man that a lot of, of stakes rise on, the only thing we have to go by is that he is a simple man in plain clothes that has a little bit of blue? There will not be so many people followed by guards as you think. No, it will not be so difficult to spot. But still, one of us will have to remain close to the road. Yeah, I'm sure. But sure enough, Pythagoras will lean forward and he'll draw a simple circle on the table. And from that circle, the lights of the room are just going to bend round as though they're contorting and um, sort of mixing with um, the table and things until a, a face... I can't check. I can't of, check. I can't, yeah, you can arcana check if you want. <laughs> 19. As, sure, 19. You can tell he's casting a minor illusion of some kind. Um, oh, 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 magic. <laughs> So yeah, effectively what he makes is a bust, like a full-on marble bust uh, from a minor illusion. But the bust is the perfect image of a deus of Eritrea. That's the fella. Never, never any good at magic, unfortunately, but he did try in his youth. Have I seen this man before? I mean, you're going to have to help me out here, Lee, because you're saying you don't remember people you've seen when it's not helpful. <laughs> <And you> do. <laughs> I, don't, I don't I remember his name, but... I mean, you know, as I was saying, do I, I, most of my stuff's going to be done on a roll. Yeah, okay. Well, since you... Um, um, would, it, would it remind him of any magic users or like... Yeah. <laughs> like an intelligence then, um, check, maybe a history check, I don't know. Weird, we're going to have to hash out how exactly this amnesia thing works, I think. <laughs> you said you've never seen the Pythagoras before, but maybe you have. Well, I didn't want to just go and say I'm going to roll on it if I've recognised him. Right, fair enough. Um... Go ahead and roll a, I guess, flat intelligence check for, for this session. And then we'll talk more about how this amnesia manifests itself later on. <laughs> 12 plus 4, 16. 16, yeah. I'll say that you don't really recognize him much now, unfortunately. I poke the so, 
on the way out, um, Perwood is going to pull aside, well, or just talk to one of the guards um, of this event and just say, <clears throat> uh, you, uh, I do not know your recruitment process for these uh, endeavors, but I do have a recommendation. We met along the road one honorable Erebus, a hoplite, and I will tell him where his family lives. Because we found it out. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. And you can mention Erebus to this man. And yeah. he'll say, we can look into it if you like. or pass the word on to the captain. But recruitment is not our, our purview. I understand. I only wish to drop the recommendation. Of course. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll yep. be on the lookout. Sure. Yeah. Head out. Back sleep. to the temple to sleep. You want to sleep? And yeah. get a so. heal. <laughs> did, they, did they imply that it was urgent? I mean, is um, sleeping okay? <laughs> well, they didn't really give you a time frame. They said that he's in Thebes on his way here, which is about yeah. a day's travel anyway. But yeah. uh, they can't really place him exactly somewhere between those. Yeah, two, so. yeah we're going to sleep. We yeah, need we'll, it. Um, we'll yeah, leave I'll, the crack of dawn. I'll pick Cleo up and uh, bring on uh, her with the crew. <laughs> Don't yeah. leave her there. So you go to effectively what is a tavern, but it is open to the Agora. So it's not an easy sleep because there it, it is extremely loud. Yeah. Um, there are several people who will drink late into the morning, um, especially given the day's events. And um, there is, I guess, people serving food and, um, you know, oh, yes. people milling around. You see like the same priests you may have seen during the day, statesmen, soldiers who all have taken on a much more relaxed pose around tables and things, eating and drinking, singing songs, you know, that type of thing. So, uh, Pro will wake up a little bit early to try and purchase a shield. All right, sure. Um, I would say, yeah, effectively you can make your way around Athens and easily enough you'll find a blacksmith from which you can purchase a shield, which will say, is the price, how much is a shield? Let's take a look. Yeah, this would just be a normal shield, so. Sure, a normal shield is do 10 drachmi or okay. 10 gold pieces. Mark that off. Uh huh. Sure. Uh, so you're presented with just a standard shield, pretty much. Nothing to uh, make. It's a simple. Well, I'm looking for the Parma shield, which okay, has yeah. the shield boss in the middle. Yeah, sure. Roman. I gotcha. Yeah, you can Not find the Greek pelt shield. shield, because I know the difference. Fair enough. But well, that's what you. <laughs> well, are those going to be available in a Greek shop? Yeah. What a nerd. Um. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, what's his name? Who is? Oh my gosh, I'm having a huge brain fight right now. Caesar's big enemy. It is the last what, Pompey? Big general. Pompey, my goodness, I couldn't. Yeah, brain fart. Pompey stayed in Greece for a while, uh, so there's a Roman influence there, while he was uh, fighting Caesar. Mm. Right. <laughs> so it is early in the morning, and um, there are several people sort of going about their early morning tasks, uh, walking around with um, vases full of some liquids and baskets full of uh, foods, making their way around the Agora, which uh, at this point in time is just like a mess of thrown over tables and sort of broken vases around from the night's previous celebrations. I will uh, seek out an antidote. Sure. <laughs> Basically, any may, may, uh, pretty much any priest would be able to Is he to help. still poisoned, or is it out of his system by now? No, it stays. So no, that poison, if you read the description, it yeah, will, he has to keep rolling until he dies. Oh, yeah. wow. Jeez. It's a big deal. <laughs> I didn't uh, think it was that bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why I keep bringing it up. Yeah. And for, fortunately, I, you don't have to roll just yet, because it's 20, every 24 hours, and yeah. it was Holy happening crap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, So, yeah, looking for an antidote. Hoping I don't have to burn a second level spell, and <laughs> <laughs> How much is that going to cost me? That effectively, grief? it will probably be free. Just about manner of queuing and uh, making your case to any kind of clarity. The question is, which temple do you go to to make it happen? Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yes. oh, no. Hippocrates is a healing <laughs> cleric. Yeah, yeah, I think we know Hippocrates, so I would probably go there. That's, that's yeah. yeah. Which is sure. the temple of? Of um of uh, <laughs> Sclepius. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, yeah, so you easily know where this was by now. You visited him a few times, and he is there. But as you approach, um, he'll say, "Ah, oh, Antigonus, please do come in. It's it's good to see you again. Uh, tell me, how, how did Herodotus fare with the, the clerics of Hypnos? I know they can be a strange bunch, but uh, did you did he manage to find anything out? I'm poisoned. Please help. <laughs> oh, you're poisoned. 
Oh, dreadful. Please come in. Take a seat. I'll, I'll be right with you. And um, they'll invite you into the sort of the smaller temple of the Sclepius, where it's just him and his attendant and um, Magna Dice, who is currently shouting at the attendant as is usual for her. Daily. Yeah, I, I will. After, OK, I'm going to wait till he heals me, but I'll, I might try to intercept that if you want to go into it. Uh, no, no, because it will intercept you, I'm sure. Because uh, okay. as soon as Asclepius comes out with his um, his symbol of holy healing, um, she'll catch an eye of it, and she'll barge past the attendant and make her put herself between you and um, and her Hippocrates coming towards you. And she'll say, what are you doing? Are you, about, are you about to heal this man, this orc? And she'll look over to you, and she'll just bark at these words at you, Antigonus, with no real care or bedside manner. She says, what is wrong with you? What well, I'm... I'm poisoned. <laughs> poisoned, it is a simple simple spell, a simple healing spell. I can do it. I have taught myself this spell, and it is not a hard spell. If you would only let me, Hippocrates. <laughs> I don't care who heals me. I just <laughs> don't want to be poisoned anymore. And she'll look over her shoulder and say, silence, you'll last a bit longer, I'm sure. You've made your way here. You can at least last another 10 minutes. <laughs> and then she'll be beginning making her case to Hippocrates. Um, <sighs> And Tigidus has gone to the experimental hospital. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> gone to the student, the student hospital. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh my god! Uh, they'll, they'll engage in sort of theological uh, debate over uh, whether Asclepius would allow a um, a priest to be a female and become a physician in Greece. But um, eventually, he'll just sigh and say, "Very well, you can you can heal the poison, but it by no means makes you a physician." Now, um, Antigonus, would you please humor? Agnidice here and allow her to attempt to hear you. Yes, yes. Very yes. well. Please go ahead. And sure enough, she comes over to you and she just looks at you and says, stop complaining and stay still. I've seen more worse poisons come from wasp stings than this. I kind of want her to fail. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's put it to a roll for her, shall we? She should. In fact, no, we, it's not fair to do a roll because she can, she can cast a spell. <laughs> this is going to come out there missing one eye. Just... Yeah. Not poison anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, she look at your arm and sort of trail the um, the bite marks and how they've infected the veins and she be crawling up your arm. And she says, yes, yes. This is a very rare poison. It is not a poison at all. It is some infectious disease, unfortunately. It has a life of its own. Very interesting, very interesting. Tell me, <laughs> when, when did that happen to you? Yesterday night. I, I don't just get, can you get rid of it, please? <laughs> yes, I can, but bear with me. Um, this is a very interesting poison in that we don't know much about it. Uh, would you be open to the idea of perhaps letting it advance so we can see the later stages of the illness? Absolutely not. Oh, please. please. <laughs> listen, listen, do you want to be a doctor? I will I... do everything I can. I have the favor of this man to let him make you a physician i will do everything in my power if you will get this thing out of me this moment without saying another word until it's gone if you say a word you will not get my favor <laughs> i will not let you do this healing all right okay power play on agni dj fair enough um i thought you want to roll intimidation or <laughs> like is that intimidation it sounds yes like 14 i want to talk to your manager <laughs> <laughs> yeah She'll, she'll just sort of scale her eyes and eventually she'll produce like her own miniature um, sort of two winged gold symbol, which she puts to the bite. And it almost seems like it's sucking the poison out of your veins and that it recedes back down your arm into the bite. And when she pulls it back, you'll see it actually coming out of your arm, this liquid, which she shakes off the thing. And then she puts it back to your arm and closes the wound. Now oh. can I talk? He indeed. Um... Okay, here, here's what you do. I pull her to the side. Go over and tell him that I've told you about the soup and that <laughs> both <laughs> that you both are now among the people who understand the soup. Don't ask questions. When he asks you what the soup is, just say more things about soup. He'll listen okay. to you forever, and you will be his student. It will work, I promise. All right, sure. Uh, do you stick around after she goes and pulls the karate's aside? Yeah, I'm sort of in the background just being like... <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'll see them, although it's hard to hear them talking, you'll hear several things about soup and ingredients and bowls <laughs> and what temperature to serve it at uh, and making different sort of miming of holding cups and drinking soup yeah, and throwing soup and then wearing soup at some points and then ideas of putting the soap bowl on the ground and walking around it in different directions and yes. then picking it over 
and then he'll begin to nod with a bit more understanding. But it's only less understanding as the more and more intricate <laughs> things uh, come around this soup. But it isn't long before um, he nods his head and he gives you a wink. I wink right back and I get the hell out of there. <laughs> I mutter under my breath, that wasn't worth saving a second level spell. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. So rejoining the party back, uh, I'll say both Pruid and Antigonus, you can make your way back to the party if you wish. Or if you want to do anything else yeah, yeah. in Athens. Yeah, let's go. Let's, 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 um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, let's go. Let's make go. like a baby and head out. Yeah, sure. As you're going through Athens, it's the same old Athenian day now, given the um, given the uh, sort of uproarious events of yesterday. But it's not long until you approach the main avenue of the um, road coming from the north into the city. And as you go there, you'll see it's absolutely packed with people. Uh, and it's hard to move past them as they make a wall on each side of the road. Uh, many of them holding children above their heads. Uh, it seems like they're in some sort of celebration, as you can hear them cheering, throwing petals from roses into the road and um, seemingly blocking the way for some kind of event that's happening there. I'll send Palamedes up. Yeah. Palamedes goes up, and it probably confirms some of your suspicions yeah. of... Um, the six heroes of the Panix from yesterday are being led out of the city by a contingent of Athenian guards at their forefront, giving make parting the way of people so the six of them can walk forward one by one single file and wave to the crowds of Athenians who've gathered to see the heroes before they commit any of their amazing labors, which they're setting out on Greece to accomplish. Uh, as you're watching, several people come up to you and offer you baskets of pedals, saying, would you, would you like to throw and celebrate the heroes as well? Oh, oh, yes, we have business. I, I understand. And, uh, Darling should... will slap the pedals out of her. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. read my mind. Sure. Yeah, we're so good at subtlety. We're so good at it. The pedals oh, uh, hit, the, hit the floor. And, uh, he's looking confused. He's, like, he's grabbed some to like, throw them. <laughs> <laughs> sure. It's easy to throw some pedals into the, into the wake of these heroes as they um, walk along. And you'll hear their names being um, mentioned by like all the people who dashed to become the first fans of these heroes. And, uh, oh, that's Cassia. They say she can charm anyone with a single kiss. It's like, oh, well, that's that's the huntress, um, Adea. That, she said she, she can hit a bird out of the sky at 300 meters. And it's like, you know, they'll just be seeing all these like outrageous things considering these heroes have yet to do anything of importance. But, um, Cara, mm-hmm. can you can you make the petals poisonous or something? I, <laughs> darling, I, if I could, I would just make them <laughs> fired. Yeah. Any more about the Herodotus poison. will quickly drop the, the petals. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, so after this uh, happens, it takes about half an hour for them to exit the city proper and the crowds begin going back to their normal business and the road clears up, available now for travel out of the city, from out of the city northwards. Um, do, can we get a map? Can we go buy a map? <laughs> hard, quite hard to come by, actually. A map. Uh, but, okay, all right. Well, I'll just simply ask someone, you know... Can I have a look if I've got a map? Yeah, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Starting the game with a bag from your past does not give you an entitlement to everything. Um, I'll just ask one of the guards, which which road leads to leads to Thebes? And they'll see you're on the right road now. It's the first city you'll come across traveling down this road. Is it the same road that the heroes went down or different? It's hard to tell unless you actually followed them. Um, n- no, I guess not. We, we hung out. branch out in different directions and he points at the one going sent away north. Okay. Oh, I also go, where were they? Where were they going? Well, they're going down the same road. Their first stop is Thebes to receive the blessing of the leader of Thebes there and make themselves known to the citizens. A prime day for Greece. New oh, heroes convenient. on the horizon that will lead us into glory against the oncoming hordes of barbarians at Greece's gates. Yeah, definitely. Um, listen, and I pull away from them. I think we may need to pass them if we're going to. Uh, if we're going to get to him before he gets to them. What if they're in cahoots? I agree. Let's go. <laughs> I saddle up our horses and try to, like... Well, look, I, you know, um, Pro will advise that we pass them after they're outside the gates. So, <laughs> as yeah. not to cause a ruckus. Yeah, yeah. Job thing, easy enough to do. You can catch up with them fairly quickly, given that they're walking and they still have crowds around them. Even though they're outside of the city, some of the more dedicated fans of these people will follow them for a good 
half an hour to an hour afterwards. Um, it's easy enough to pass by on unseen and moving at a much quicker pace than them. Yeah. Good, good, good. Um, so do I know, um, would I know how a long of a journey is it to Thebes? Mm, yeah, they, probably. Yeah, they said it was about a day, so. Oh, just a day? Okay, yeah, yeah then we'll, I advise, yeah, as soon as we're ahead, you know, I think we should go about halfway down the road or maybe uh, two thirds and make camp and wait. Um, Herodotus, could your bird possibly fly ahead and see if he can locate this fellow? I'll look at Palamedes. Oh, can you? <laughs> They'll say, I, I can't communicate with you if I'm too far away, Herodotus. Uh, I can scout in the air above, but not too far ahead. Well, if you, if you say so, on you can come back. Mm -hmm. well, I suppose it's possible. But if I am taken out of the sky by something, you won't know, and you'll be waiting for me, so... Of course I know. It would, it would sever a connection. I'm a wizard. I think the connection <laughs> only lasts like 100 feet or so, or something, as far as I know. Mental connection. He's, he's only able to see through his yeah. eyes out to 100 feet, but yeah. the connection actually goes further oh, right. than that. Okay, and, fair enough, fair yeah. enough. That's as long it. as they're on the same plane, he can One feel. of those annoying spells. <laughs> yeah, the description on Find Familiar is super vaguely worded. It's Yeah, okay, sure. Um, <laughs> so you send Palamides ahead. Is that what you want to do? Yeah. Okay. Sure. So he he's very fast. Yeah, indeed. He's not the fastest owl in the world, but he does make <laughs> like, at least better pace than you, as you see him in the distance until he disappears into a dot in the sky until it's too difficult to see him. Um, and I'd like to be up front with uh, Pruitt, I imagine, trying to just perceive whatever we can. Are there tracks? Are there any weird camps to the side of the roads? Um, oh, yeah. Dozens. It's a popularly traveled road, and you'll pass several people on your way. None of them seem to be matching the description of the person you're looking for, but um, people with wagons and donkeys transporting goods to Athens, from Athens. You'll pass people who you move quicker than, going in the same direction as Thebes, people going, you know, uh, off to the side, there will be several camps, people who are taking the late start to the day, that type of thing. So hunting down a quarry will require a bit more specific tactics, I'd say. Antigonus, I uh, do not think we need to worry so much about him being on the camp on the side. Uh, given his position, I would think that he would go straight to Athens so as to rest in comfort there. So the journey is possible in one day. Uh, but let us keep an eye out. I just worry that if we make camp and try to wait for him, that uh, that party of those heroes will catch up to us eventually. So I'd like to get further down towards Thebes if we can. Without yes, being I agree. Entirely obvious. Uh, so, yeah, is so let's. At, is there like a point at which the crowd thins out a bit, or is it like super crowded basically all the way down this road? Uh, every few, like I'd say every half hour or so, you pass somebody. Um, but yeah, keeping an eye out on the camps on the side of the road, uh, you do notice that there are several people on them. Um, generally, some people have got more hunting camps set up, so they're more of a permanent installation as they uh, spend a hunting trip here on the sides of the. Athenian roads where there is some he hefty forestry so um but you also see logging camps these types of ones you know not for travel but they are you know um inhabited by generally a lot of people so we need a plan to take a um adrius sorry yeah adeus Adeus, yeah, yeah, that's Adrius was the other guy, yeah, Adeus. We need to, a plan to take Adeus off the road. I was thinking maybe Herodotus is disguised as someone else before. Maybe he could look like the Oracle. Oh, that would certainly scare the hell out of him. Yes, I only worry that maybe he is running away from his fate. Maybe he has done something evil and would thus not follow the Oracle. Uh, what I can take him off the road? I could try and distract him. That's... How would you take him off the road? I could try and suggest for him to come over to me, maybe dismount his horse or mm. cart. But from then, work. I don't know. Kara, I know you don't like to disturb nature, but do you have anything that could potentially make a tree fall across the road, make him have to divert himself somewhat, or? 
Um, I could potentially sprout some plants that would make the road more difficult to travel that he might decide to go around. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, we could actually just chop down a tree if, if there's nothing else, but I don't... I don't think to. that will take him off the road, though. I think he will simply go over it or around it, but not out of the way. Well, how far off the road do we need him to go? Out of eyesight of any other travelers. If these other six heroes are on the road, for example, we would not want them happening onto our situation. That's fair. Um, um, yeah. How how uh, forested is it off the sides of the road? Um, like, there is if a, we took this guy off the road, can we expect reasonable cover? <laughs> yeah, if you took him far enough, there is a section of clearing between the road and the tree line, maybe around 30 feet. Right, but like, yeah, it isn't like open plains so that anybody can yeah. see what we're doing. Is what Not I'm open cool. plains. Good, good. Okay. Huh. You gentlemen hide and Yarling and I just pretend like we're two helpless women in need of some help <laughs> off the side of the road. One of that my favorite work. tricks. Yarling, you'll have to do the talking. I'll try my best. Uh, you just look pretty, okay? Hmm. Uh, Harry, just to let you know, um, Yarling probably would have taken Cleo back to the temple or had hired someone to take care of Cleo ah, so she right. doesn't come on the road <laughs> yeah. with us. Yeah, I was going to say that Frey would offer to take care of Cleo during your absence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She would have she would have left her with that. Sure. And during your conversations with Frey, you would have realized from her that both her uh, Aspasia and Frey are Hetera. Uh, oh, okay. A what? A what? A Hetera, which um, is a special type of figure in ancient Greece, sort of a courtesan that involves themselves in politics and um, wooing politicians to get their ways and things. That's perfect. <laughs> in fact, Aspasia is um, seemingly considering that she um, commands friend's actions and um, commands, obviously, the respect of Pericles. You can assume that she's quite an accomplished Hetera as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we have a few options for the plan. I think about on one point in the road, we could have Kara and Yaling try and do their thing, and pretend to be helpless women, and get them off the road that way. I think at the uh, the further point down the road, maybe within eyesight, we will cut down the tree, have it be in the way. Uh, maybe Herodotus can disguise as the oracle, and I will accompany him. I can make the oracle's voice in the air um, if we need to, and uh, divert him off the road that way. What do you all think? I'm suspicious that a man who travels with a guard would be uh, enticed to be very helpful to some young women, but I don't know. Maybe he has weaknesses I'm unaware of. Uh, I, yes, the Oracle is only a backup plan in this case. Sure. Yeah, I do think that the tree in the road bit is, um, well, it's a little overused, but <laughs> it's about the best that I can find. I think that me and Kara could put on quite a spectacular show if she could use her abilities to make uh, beautiful plants and flowers and I do my best with talking and maybe some dancing. You're going to try and seduce <laughs> okay. him or are you going to try and appear helpless mm. and in need of help? A little bit of both. Fair enough. I will not question it. I, I trust that. I um... <laughs> All right. Uh, so how about... Um... If, if if the bird hasn't come back yet, we'll keep traveling till we find a nice big gap in the yeah. uh, people that are coming, and then I will help hack down a tree and send you guys maybe half a mile. Well, that's probably too far. Maybe um. So so what I'm imagining is at one position closer to Thebes, we're going to have Yaling and Kara, and then about sixty feet back from them, we're going to have a downed tree in the road. Um, I, uh, Pruitt and Herodotus will be in hiding next to the tree so that if the other plan doesn't work, they can then use the spell and do that alternate plan. And then Antigonus, I'm thinking, will be somewhere in between to kind of message okay. between the groups. Okay, did, right. Did the guard say that they were going to meet them at Thebes or meet them halfway? Um, did you clarify? Sorry. 
in my head, the guards said that they were going to meet the guy at Thebes and then escort him back. No, no, the six heroes are going to meet the leader of Thebes, not Adeus. Oh, right, okay. okay. They, yeah. they, they just happen to be on the same road, so... Right, okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the one. <laughs> so, um, yeah, okay, uh, if that's the way you want to play it, I'm going to say that, do you want to clarify for me, Herodes, just what you told Palamides to look for? Um, I was looking for the blue man. Okay, sure. Right. Fair enough. Well, in that case, there is very little few of them on the road. It's not long before he returns to you then, maybe around three hours uh, of you traveling along until you set up this um, thing. And yep. a lot of people do pass. And um, as the it, have you chopped down the tree by this point? Um, I mean, I don't know how long yeah. it would take to chop down a tree, but I would make sure no one got hurt when I did it. I would look yeah, like sure. Yeah. It, it falls down like 15, 20 feet um, before somebody cr like walking his cart along the road and he just gets up to it and he looks at you with axe in hand and he says, what are you doing? Why um, have you done this? I uh, put on my, my helmet and say, um, orders of the council, you know, I just <laughs> tell me. What council? Who ordered uh, this? I'd have words with this council. Yeah, you should totally go to the Agora and voice your concerns about why they want us to chop down trees on this path. That's weird to me, too, but I just follow orders. Well, you could be certain I shall do. I, yeah, indeed, I shall. I will make all my ideas known. And he just works his cart around onto the soft grass on the side. It takes a lot of time to make it get around rather than on the actual road itself. Go ahead and roll yeah. deception. But. <laughs> oh, good lord. Ah! Um, I think 11. <laughs> yeah, that's about right for that kind of explanation. Yeah. So yeah. he just he just narrows his eyes as he leads his car along back into Ath well, on the way to Athens. He's constantly looking over his shoulder at you with an axe in hand, and he, he gets about thirty feet before he says, "Well, are you going to chop down another one or?" Oh, yeah, uh, yeah obviously. Well, you know, no one. My boss isn't here, so I try to take breaks when he's not watching me. And <laughs> stop slacking off and get to chopping trees down. That's a little... You just told me you didn't like it. I'm confused by your reasoning, but sure, okay. My, my, my respect for authority outweighs my... My, my, <laughs> my, my <laughs> legacy of trees. <laughs> yeah, well, enjoy being a sheep. And I just, like, lazily hack another tree. <laughs> <in the back. laughs> right, right. He'll make his way on to... Um, to uh, Athens, but yeah, um, per uh, Palamedes will come back and he'll flutter down into uh, onto your shoulder there, or onto the top of your staff. In fact, um, Herodotus, as it, this, it turns and says to you telepathically, uh, "Your blue-skinned gentleman, quite a large fellow. He's, he's on his way. Not long now. I'd I'd give him another ten minutes, perhaps, before you see him come over that 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 rise there in the road. So, um, would you like me to introduce you? Uh, oh no, no, I think we've got to kill him. No, oh, oh, you want to kill him? <laughs> Oh, I see. I, I may have made myself a bit too noticeable in that regard, <laughs> but I'm sure they won't clog on to me. Don't worry. Uh, um, I'll just stay quiet for now. I'm going to go sit up in one of those trees and watch you what watch you kill them. Oh, well, be careful, because don't take it as it's chopping them down. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, it goes to one of the faraway trees. Then, in that case, you just need them taking this like sort of swinging an axe into a tree in the way that he doesn't want to chop it down, rather than just placate somebody who's making him chop them down. Yeah, uh, well, the they're, they're thing... coming. Sure. Yeah. Um, before it happens, I have if you're hiding by the side of the road, Herodotus and Pruitt, you're both going to need to roll stealth checks. Um, Antigonus is doing the same thing. I think they're Antigonus as well. Then. Ooh, okay. Um, oh, dear. Hey. Twelve oh, dear. for stealth. Nine. Nine. 23. 23. Okay. Good to know. Um, let's see if that beats. Rogers is his hiding, but you can just see his big staff. <laughs> let's, let's check some passive um, perceptions. Can we point out one with... thing, though? Can, can last night, did you, I could, could Herodotus have identified the mace? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yes, yeah, so I said I was going to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah fair enough. Um, what kind of mace was that? It's called a mace of hunger, and it is a magical mace. Um, effectively, it does your standard mace damage plus 1d6 necrotic. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> That's really yeah. good. Uh, I would I would like that if no one else wants it. Sure. It's like a, yeah. it's Go effectively ahead. like a, um, a sort of cold iron figure of a mouth that's open I and mean, you hit it well actually not... sorry i just imagine pruitt going and sneak attacking with this so i'm sorry i'm gonna have to take that from you <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, <you're> keeping it <laughs> too late i've sold it 
No, right. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever the space is, uh, we'll get to that. No, yeah, it's um, with Antigonus. It's with Antigonus. Okay, sure. <laughs> so yeah, you've got this Antigonus. It's in the shape of like a human mouth, like the sharp sort of incising teeth. And um, yeah, it's open. And as you can imagine, hitting someone with it will most likely catch them on these open mouth teeth. It's a pretty, uh, pretty nasty image of it. But there you go. That's what you get for taking weapons cool. from evil clerics. Um, <laughs> Very well, yeah. As the owl relates, uh, unless anyone's got any um, more preparations, uh, indeed you do see coming over the horizon um, the figure that would most uh, likely be this blue gentleman that has been described to you. It's a large person. You see him leading a horse upon which sits a bald man. On either side, there are three very uh, very um, identically dressed attendants, all in um, very simple white robes. Um, moving alongside it, but only the figure, the large figure at the front seems to be any kind of combatant. I would have been using druid craft to kind of start just blooming up some flowers in kind of a little off area, off the road. Yalling would have just been... A little flower stage for yalling. Okay. Yalling would have been kind of using uh, dirt and anything she can find uh, to kind of try and make it look like there's been some kind of scuffle, like any kind of uh, like a, an issue, kind of rough up her clothes to make it like she's been running. And she'll kind of go over to Kara, who's doing this beautiful thing, and just kind of like rub dirt on her. And <laughs> <laughs> the um, the oh, figure stop oh, at the road at the. Dirty. Sorry, <laughs> right, fair enough. Um, the figure stop at the road at the at the log. First, which I think is like six. No, that, that was no, that was behind. The other way. They're, They're going to run into the women first. Yeah, right. Okay. And I assume the dirt thing was before they arrived. But yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> understood. Understood. Yeah. So yeah, they uh, they eventually do come close to you two on the path. Uh, at which point, the blue figure stops the horse, um, and he looks at both of you without saying a word. This man's like seven foot tall, and he's like three feet across. He's pretty hefty. Um, and in, <laughs> like he's got a very deep shade of blue to his skin, large uh, also shade of blue to his large beard that he um, wears very proudly. Um, but he just w watches both of you for, you for a good few seconds before saying anything at all. And just simply says, "Stand aside." Please, you must help us. A group of us. We've we've just been attacked. We just managed to get away. Please. No, a roll of deception. Clown bird. <laughs> with, uh, with advantage, because you're being helped by him. Um, by yes. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, well, on, on the dice, I roll a two and a four. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, so that's an eight. No. <laughs> And he'll just, with his, so he's got the, um, a spear in one hand, and across his back you see three identical spears as well, each of them larger than any spear a soldier would normally wield. He just narrows his eyes at you as you say this to him, and he says, Is that the case? Somebody's robbed you? Yes, we need, we need, some, we need some strong people to come protect us and help us. In that case... My little sweetheart, let me show you just how strong I am. Oh, and no. He shoulders the spear, and he begins to wind it back. He's about to throw it at you, but his hand changes to the left of the forest, and immediately he throws it deep into the tree line. And Herodotus, you see a large spear coming your way. And that's where we'll roll initiative, because seven oh. <laughs> to get past his passive perception. And he saw you coming, and he was already suspicious. But yeah, we'll roll initiative. Um, hang on. And can we do it on... Oh. Oh. Oh yeah, I get to do it on the. On so the he he knew we were coming. Like, oh well, now I don't feel so bad for like failing. <laughs> yeah, that's what you have, get for sending your wizard to do a stealth mission. <laughs> um, so you didn't have to waste a spell slot before. Perfect. It. <laughs> let's put this music on. Hopefully, it's not too loud. All right, so I'm going to need to get some initiative rolls. Pruitt's got a fifteen. But you're still uh, hidden yeah. through it as well, as is Antigonus. Oops, that's annoying. And Yaling got a 16. Mm-hmm. Kara, what did you get? 
I got an eight. I'm sorry, I'm a bad person and I still don't have my info. I'm not real don't 20. Don't worry about it. I can just add you. Jeez. All right, so they roll theirs. Um, this guy first. 12. Oh, sorry, my bad. It's a 17. Sorry, my bad. Is that is that you, a Panda, saying that, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Uh, and then these guys will roll theirs. Looks like we've got a couple of duplicates. So, who has more dex, Herodotus or Antigonus? Uh, plus two. Dex is plus... Uh, doo -doo -doo. I think yours is plus one. Plus one, yeah. No. All right, so Herodotus will act first in that case. The fastest, tankiest mage in the history of DD. <laughs> <laughs> but my acolytes get six. Yeah, luckily the, the javelin's only hitting Herodotus, so, you know, it's it's all good. Uh, <laughs> got those obviously, with this coming, Harry, I would have precast mage armor, by the way. Oh, uh, would you have? Well, you should have said that before have. combat began then. <laughs> if I'm being fair, but I'll allow it this time, but remember, you know, Saying I obviously have already cast mage armor doesn't so as the javelin is flying through the air. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 well, yeah, because mage armor is not a reaction, so it you know. Doesn't actually take my my armor class up by that much. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Fair enough, right? Yeah, okay. We'll say he cast mage armor for now. Um, but yeah, he will get an attack with his spear straight away. Is at the start of the round. So, uh, does a twelve hit? No. Fair enough, right? With that, we're going to turn. Other than as he pulls it another spear off. from his back and. Um, Pulls another spear from his back and begins to face both Yarling and Kara in the center of the road. But it's not his turn now. It's um, it's P Panda's turn. So what would you like to do, Panda? I'm going to uh, uh, extend my, uh, my hand towards him and attempt to give him a crown of madness. Oh, interesting. Ooh. Okay, what kind of save is that for me? I believe it's a wisdom save. Let me have a looky. That one might be intelligent. No, that, that, I think that wasn't no, it's intelligent. a wisdom save. Wisdom yeah. save through. That's right. Save. Enemies abound as intelligence today. Uh, a five. Wow. Okay. Yeah, he <laughs> fails. So this 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 this, uh, this crown just starts to like a jagged iron crown just starts to appear over his head, mm -hmm. and uh, his eyes glow just mad. Um, and. I want him to turn on his own men. <laughs> yes, certainly. If they're the ones closest to him, he may well do that. Uh, but okay, does it end your turn? Or? It does. Actually, no, I will pass some inspiration over to Kara. I'll just say, uh, we can fix this. I'm doing that thing again where I have a massive battle map set up and I've never put people fucking on it. <laughs> so, there you go. That's on roll 20. You should be on a battle map now. Hey, uh, I'm reloading. Yep, yeah, sure. Missing, I think, Kara in roll 20. There we are. Yeah, there we go. Um, sure, so uh, it's, I guess, Pruitt's turn now then, yeah? D did you pre-prepare the log in the road? I did it while you guys were talking. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so right. Pruitt's turn. Okay, uh -huh. yeah, so we're 60 feet away. Harada <laughs> does and I are 60 feet away. Uh, oh, you're 60 feet away. I'll put you back over here for some... We'll say you start here then. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't see my token anywhere. Oh, uh, not here. Oh, I see it. Oh, there it is. I, I guess that works. Yeah, sure. Cool. Um, this guy's a blue man. Cool. Okay. I give this guy his initiative action. The dais. Yeah, the uh, the blue guy is uh, he's got the crown, so he's basically on our side now. Okay. Sorry, I don't know that, and I kind of had a plan before you did that, so I'm gonna okay. do it. Um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm gonna first. I'm going to fire my short bow at Mr. Blue. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure thing. That uh, dang. Oh, advantage because hidden, right? Uh, yeah, you are still hidden. Yeah. Oh, it's even worse. Dang it, thirteen to hit. All right, uh, that is not a hit, unfortunately. As okay. with his small, small leather shield, he just raises it just in time to catch it and deflect it off. Um, okay. But so then I'm going to run forward twenty-five feet. Five, ten. Okay. 20, 25. I guess I could bonus action dash. Well, that is the bonus action dash, so I don't. I haven't used my movement yet. Very well. It's all drawing my sword and shield. I'll dash. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Get to there, and all this time I'm yelling out, "How dare you attack those women!" <laughs> <laughs> Just a stranger. A good Samaritan on the road is pro. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. so, um, so it's his turn now, and sure enough, to the spell he will. Uh, use his action to make an attack before moving. 
against someone other than Panda, other than Yarling. So let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. This guy will uh, multi attack with um, three melee attacks. Uh, he'll shield bash on the guy for 16, which indeed makes him roll a, um, a what is that, strength save? Yeah. Which he rolls an eight, so he gets knocked prone. <laughs> and then he'll use spear, which is rolled with advantage on a guy who's um, prone. prone. At 12, it's, it hits, and as does the other one there. So oh, crit. these are the shield thing attacked first with an 11. His second attack hit the spear with a 10, and his third attack was a crit. So he does a total of 30, well, what's that? 30, 30, 36 damage to this guy, Holy which kills him. <laughs> That kills him several times over. And this guy, <laughs> this guy with this um, leather shield, just swings it wide, and the guy almost gets knocked straight into the like into the underbrush by the side of the road before he takes several steps over to him and lifts this giant spear down and just jabs it into him, impaling him in the ground before pulling it out. And with it, the hooked on his spear is just this guts of this guy's insides as he caves it in again through his chest as though it's just butted to the spear and pulls it out again. Um, but that's be cool yelling again. Sweetheart, I think at some point, or Just like, good boy, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At which point he will, as he's allowed to, take movements towards somebody else. But that's where he'll end his turn. Effectively, he's not on your side. Just so you know, he's just bloodthirsty at this point for anybody except you. Does that make sense? I thought Crown of Madness. Uh, I, I I mentally choose who the target is. Yeah, yeah but you you he's not on your side. That would be a mistake. But I mean, like, I, I choose who he attacks. Okay, hang on, right, yeah. Could you link it in Roll20 because it's a difficult spell? I, as far as I know, um, he just has to make a melee attack before he moves against anyone that's not you. That's, that's the first that's one. That's the about. first one. Oh, that's right. a different spell, Harry. Okay, right, here we go. Uh, the chant target must make an action for four moves. And I said when you must use your action to maintain control of the target of the spell ends. Also, the target can make a wisdom save for at the end of each of its turns. I didn't know that. <laughs> so, yeah. so he can make that now, right? And he can break out of it, or uh, at, at the end of his turn, yeah, he can he can roll. Fortunately, <laughs> linking the spell proved to be your downfall. <laughs> it reminded me that he can save him for it to so get out. Would he have moved towards someone else first, then, or? Um, I'm gonna let's see. I mean. The charm target must use its action before moving. Well, the target one human you see in this room. No. Well, the target is charmed, twisted crown of jagged form, bears of its own right side. The charm target must use its action before moving on each of its turns to make attack melee attack against a creature other than itself that you mentally choose. Well, if that was a, the person you chose on this turn, I mean, did you specify who you wanted to choose, or would it have been that guy? Or yeah, it would have been because it was the guy closest. Okay, I'll compromise and say he'll start his turn where he was before. And then um, he's out of the spell now, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, bloody complex D and D stuff. Right. Okay. Uh, so, Kara, it's your turn. Okay. So, seeing what's going on, the smaller guys, I guess, um, the sort of minion guys. What are they wearing? What's their armor look like? Very simple. In fact, there's very little armor on them at all. They're just um, like simple robes. Okay, okay. In that case, I will just start mentally concentrating, pull my hands up like this, and just kind of reach like I'm pulling up the earth around okay. them, and a bunch of jagged, thorny vines will come up, and I'm going to cast Entangle, and I'm aiming to try not to hit Prewit and just keep it on the road and to the left. I see. Okay, and um, is it a 20 foot one? Yes. Would you like it there? Radius, Is that right? okay? Sorry. It's bigger than that. Is it? It's a 20 foot radius, so it'll be a 40 foot diameter. Ah, right. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Like, oh, God, it's big. Right. We'll just call it that for the time being. For mechanical. Yeah, actually, closer down because I would be fine with encompassing the blue guy. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. 20 foot radius is massive, huh? Right. Okay. Sure. And the strength saves all around, right? Yes. Okay, so he'll make his, which he's frankly pretty good at, but nope, he doesn't get out of it. Six. <laughs> is that like what? Is he easy restrained or? Yes. Um, so must cast a, must succeed on a strength saving throw or be restrained until the spell ends. If they're restrained, they can use their action to make a strength check to get out. It also makes the entire area in there um, difficult terrain. 
Okay, sure. Well, we'll put that with like this arrow in the back one. One of the acolytes succeeds. Um, let's see this one, and then we'll do um, a deuses as well. Uh, strength save. I'll just do from him, not his horse, because then you know he doesn't succeed either with that roll. So uh, he's also restrained as these um, sort of weeds and roots start entangling people in this huge area. It's and, like this uh, massive vines just come up and just grab them. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, right, is that end your turn? Um, oh, it's a- I'm gonna just kind of move over into the tree line a little bit and then be done. Right, sure. Um, then it brings it around to Antigonus's turn. What would you like to do, Antigonus? You're muted. <laughs> All right, uh, Antigonus will take some clay, smear it across his forehead, and his whole skin becomes a nice chiseled chunk of clay with Shield of Faith. All right, very uh, nice. As a bonus action, and then I will, as my action, get closer to the guy in the back, um, and I will, let's see, I don't want to be too close to Pruitt. Da, 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 let's be here. And then I will cast Sacred Flame on the Acolyte closest to me as my action. Very well, sure. Um, Dexterity save 14. Rightio. Uh, the one closest to you, Dexterity save 14. Uh, 15, he succeeds. All right. So yeah. just a bit off in my rubbing my fingers together and throwing some sparks, but I guess I, I'm a little short. Sure. All right. That's my I turn. have somebody in Discord telling me that You're that entangle is very, is very wrong because it's a 20-foot square. But uh, I looked it up afterwards. Yeah, that yeah. was my bad. It is uh, a twenty foot square. I'll say it, we'll keep it for now, but in the next time we'll uh, we'll make it work <laughs> better. Which displaces the <laughs> tactics a bit because now, now he loses a turn, but still, no worries. Herodotus, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Um, Herodotus will obviously jump, seeing the uh, spear land at his feet. <laughs> Where did that come from? Um, <laughs> and then look up, sees Pruitt run towards the. <laughs> We've started, um, and I will from where I am. See the big blue bad guy? I am mm. going to send an electric jolt through his staff. <laughs> All right, sure thing. Absolutely. Uh, he's not even, he's basically pulling at these roots right now, so yeah. he doesn't even see it coming. So go ahead and roll with advantage, right. I think. He's restrained. Oh, is it advantage? Yeah, yeah as well. Bit. Okay, well, well, I've hit 19 with that one, and the other yeah. one would be 26. All right, sure. They're, well, they both hit, so go ahead and roll damage. And I've got this on now, so let me just try to see if this does this. Oh, one fire damage. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've linked D&D like Beyond yeah. to roll 20 so we can Excellent. do what we want <laughs> yeah sure so it, it goes across he doesn't even react as this thing just bounces off one of his biceps and the shoots into the sky um, but he just sort of rub his, rub his hand on it he's not sure what it was perhaps a bug bite of some kind but nothing that's <laughs> right now immediately in, um, dangerous to him so uh, I think any I missed ever? him <laughs> Yeah, he didn't do much damage to him, unfortunately. Uh, does that end your turn, Herodotus? So? Um, mm, mm, yeah, it does. All right, sure thing. Uh, right, so it's the Acolyte's turn. This one will obviously use his... Um, actually, no, he won't actually try and get away from it. He's got no, no need to. So he'll pull out from his um, from his robes a holy symbol of some kind. The, the design of which is a bit confusing to you as though you've never seen it before. Um so he's going to cast Sanctuary as a bonus action on the blue guy. So effectively, does all, everyone know what Sanctuary does? Not off the top of my head. Okay, you I have can to protect. make a wisdom save to attack him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let me look it up on roll 20. I can drag it on for now. Uh, you are a creature with a range against attack. Until the spell ends, any creature who targets the warded creature with an attack or a harmful spell must first make a wisdom saving throw. On a failure, the creature must choose a new target or lose the attack or spell. Um, but he that's just a bonus action, so the Eclite will actually use his action to try and escape by rolling another strength saving throw. What's the DC, Kara? 13. It's, not, it's 13, yeah. So uh, this one stays where he is, and now this one is going to um, move. Five. So he gets, it's a uh, difficult terrain, right? Mm-hmm. 10, 20, 30. Um... And he's going to cast Bless as well uh, with the same holy symbol. That's of a confusing design to you. And he's going to target both himself, uh, the blue guy, 
uh, Ac- and um, the other Acolyte, actually. He'll leave Acolyte. He doesn't expect him to fight. Uh, all right, that ends his turn. So it's now Ac- uh, Adeus' turn, and he'll rear up his horse, and he will try and pull it from the roots to try and escape. Um, let's see what I've got under Noble. So, strength. Uh, one. Wow, it gets <laughs> more one. rooted up as it tries to pull its uh, its hooves from the um from the roots. They just tangle more in, and it seems to get <laughs> like each one that seems to be coming the, like a small plant in itself as the roots that surround it and sort of envelop it. Um, yeah, but I'll end his turn. So, Panda, it's your turn. <clears throat> Yarling is going to try and attack the blue guy with her um with her spear. Do it. So it's a wisdom save. Yes. Okay. Well, that's a seven. So I take that. I fail. Uh, yes. Um, and that I can then still attack someone else, right? Yeah, sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll attack the Acolyte here. I'll kind of move over to over here, take a, okay. a hit of him with my spear, which Let's is see. a 14 to hit. Just want to make sure you can get there without taking an attack of opportunity. You should be able to. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, a 14, did you say? Yeah, to hit. The Acolyte, yep, it indeed hits him. Okay, so that is 1d10. I'm also going to expend a Bardic uh, Inspiration to do 2d6 Psychic Damage as well. All right, okay. Um, Cardic Whispers? Ooh. Um, (laughs) I can't find a d10. Okay, Okay, so that is 3 damage from the spear and... 10 from the psychic damage. Wow, well, how does that look? Because it definitely kills him. Um, so she hits him with the spear, doesn't really do much, and then she just stares almost deep into his eyes. And when she does, she just it kind of drives it deeper in. And <laughs> I think his eyes just kind of almost like frozen in fear, just just terrified. Yeah, As sure. She just kind of pins him slowly down. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. If fear was a tangible, a sort of liquid, horrible substance, whatever that would be, it seems to be infected on the end of your sphere. As you stab him, just the fear takes over him. A massive amount of adrenaline and then an existential dread comes over him as he realizes that these are the final moments of his life. As he just looks in complete shock as he falls back to the floor. Um, it was the- pretty much another, like, stand up, sit down. It was, it was stab. I'm not going to die. Yes, you are. <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> Fair enough. And since he was the one who cast Bless, that effectively goes off because that is nice. a concentration spell. All oh, right. Does it end your turn? Uh, yes, I do because I think my bonus action is the bardic inspiration. Very well. So, uh, Pro, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Um, huh. <laughs> I'm still pretending to be the good Samaritan, Samaritan uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, first, I'll bonus action inside the blue guy to see if I can sneak attack him. Oh right. Yep. Sure. Have okay, roll deception. Ah, oh, jeez. Is, uh, uh, is it a saving th- for me? Or? Yeah, have him roll a deception check. Oh, he has to roll a deception check. Yep. Okay. Uh, 15. Dang it, he beat me. But <laughs> that's okay because he's restrained, so I'll still get sneak attack. Make mm. my way over to him. I'll just be shouting out, I'm here to help! And I'm going to attack the blue guy. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I have to make a so- wisdom save, don't I? Uh, yes, you do. That's yeah, how you justify okay. it to yourself. Okay. Nice. I think I got it. Uh, 16. Uh, that will do it, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I'll attack him with the advantage. Uh, okay, that is 15 to hit. Uh, it does not hit, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Sorry about that. No, uh, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I just, just deflect your spell. I don't even just throw it to one side and for the sake of it he'll use his reaction that he gets once around anyway because it's his turn next. Wait, actually, sorry. I forgot. Mm-hmm. It's a magical gladius, so 16 to hit. Very well, 16, but he will use his reaction. Um, okay. As you try and hit him, he will use parry, which the, he adds three to his AC, and one melee attack that would hit. To do so, okay. the gladiator must be able to see the attack and be wielding a melee weapon. Okay, fair so enough, fair enough. Thing, and he just like clatters your spear aside as it tries to find his gut, but it doesn't quite make it. Passes the shield, but his, his own spear just like lifts upwards, and from that you can tell he's some sort of accomplished warrior, at least, at, at the very okay. least. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is his turn now. And being that you're so close to him, he can attack you. Yep. So at disadvantage. Is, at disadvantage. He is restrained. Yep. Um, but okay. He will simply go for a multi-attack. Um, and he will start with a shield bash. Ten. 
Miss. All right, very well. So he'll stay at another 11 and a 9. Miss, miss, miss. Yep, sure. He's too quick for him as he's trying to sort of um, doing these very quick in succession jabs with his spear, but they just keep missing side to side. He just yep. let, lets out a sort of growl of anger at you. He says, if you're looking to help, help us. We've been accosted by bandits. You attack the women. <laughs> <laughs> not, te not technically true. but I, <laughs> that's I, you, think you know, true. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's true. DM, I think it's true. I know, I know. Yeah, true. That's How true. could it be true? He threw a spear, an old man. Yeah. My hero. Lurking in the forest. He was looking with glasses. <laughs> Oh, fair enough. <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, Prim will actually say, you attacked the women and you killed that man. And I'm going to point to the acolyte that he killed. That's, yeah, that is true as well. <laughs> <All right. Yep. laughs> he's, he's his own worst enemy at this point. So, yep. <laughs> uh, that will end his turn. Um, Karo, it's your turn. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to move and then do my action. But for flavor, I'm going to kind of put it together. If that's okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, I'm underneath the tree. So I'm going to reach up into the leaves of the tree and kind of shake the branches and shake whatever dew is on the leaves. And it'll sort of start to crystallize and congeal in my hand. And as that happens, I'll move this way and I'm gonna throw an ice knife at that acolyte in the back. All right, sure thing. But uh, the sanctuary spell has gone off because he has made an attack. So sanctuary no longer works for him because he made an attack, the us now. Okay. All right, so go ahead and go re roll the uh, initial throwing dagger sort of thing. Yes. Oh, that's good. Uh, eight. Eight, yeah, uh, in fact, misses. Um, but he will still take the residual damage from it exploding, mm -hmm. uh, which he needs to make a dexterity saving throw for, right? Yes. So let's see what he can do. He is restrained, so that is with disadvantage anyway, but he's 3-3. Three, three. So I assume it definitely takes full damage, 2d6, right? Yes. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and roll that damage. Seven damage. Seven damage. Not quite enough to bring him down, but there are shards of ice that stick out of his skin, which slowly begin to melt. And as they do, they let blood flow, uh, flow forth from these open wounds. But he still manages to keep himself up, although restrained still. Cool. That's it for me. All right. So I'm taking this. What would you like to do? All right. So I think this will dig in his pouch, pull out a clay vulture, throw it in the air, and cast spiritual weapon, and a vulture will dive down at the acolyte and peck at his liver. <laughs> All right, sure thing. Go ahead and roll a um, spiritual weapon damage uh, with advantage. Oh, not great. Uh, 12? Uh, 12 will not hit him, unfortunately, no. Monkeys. All right. Uh, and then I will, I think I'm going to stay in the same place, and I'm going to, uh, getting frustrated, all these misses, rub my hands together for a lot of friction and throw another sacred flame as my okay. action. On yeah, the sure thing. Go ahead. Thanks to saving throw. throw. Um, let's see. Where is There he is. Dexterity saving throw. Disadvantage on deck saves while restrained. That's there true. we go. That's better. So he gets a nine, so he takes full damage from it. Uh-huh. 1d8 damage. It is three fire radiant damage. Wow. Okay. You guys are hitting hard today. Really going. <laughs> <laughs> Between you and Herodotus, you've hit him four damage. So. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, gosh, that... Going for the Acolyte, not going for the blue. Oh, sorry. Fair enough. Right. Yeah, and that indeed does finish him off. Fair enough. Even though it's oh. not too much damage, that's all you take. So, yeah, how does he meet his end? Is this thing, this, is it the spiritual weapon that's attacking him as well? Uh, he, uh, it did try to attack him as well. Ah, so right. okay. Did the 12 hit him? It did. So oh, you, can use, okay. you can instead use that on the other guy if you want. Yeah, let's put the sacred flame on the other guy. So, yeah, the, he will, the, the, feast, the vulture will feast on his liver until he dies. All and right, sure. this guy will burst into a, a radiant flame. Absolutely. <laughs> now I'm feeling more confident. Okay. Uh and then All I was right. out. I, uh, I was well. Hmm, I'm going to try to get back here. So in case this guy tries to run, um, right? Understood. Got a flank on him a little bit. From let's get to about right there, um, in the trees. And then yes, I will scream out, uh, uh, a Deus. Yeah, and uh, he will respond on his turn if okay, he wants, if he chooses to. All right. All right. Um, Herodotus, it's your turn. Planes a little bit. Uh, I think I better get a bit closer, and I will walk a bit closer so I can see. Thirty foot, roughly. I think that's it. Or five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. I'll do. And he will um, pull out some rose petals that he kept earlier from obviously okay. the, from the heroes, 
and just blow them towards them and cast sleep at second level. All right, sure thing. On who? On what exactly? On a, a twi- certain area a, of 20 feet? It's a 20 foot, 20 foot square. Cube. Yeah, okay, yeah. sure. Uh, um, I'm going to assume this, yeah. the small one. All right, um, go ahead. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to try this to see if it works. Cast on BTT. Oh, it just bloody does that. Right, hang on. Yeah, there's so, a lot going on there. I can't really right, just, so it's six. Is it 68? At uh, higher level, it'll be a, I guess, a seventy-eight. Oh, oh, yeah. seventy-eight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to do it on there anyway because sod that. Roll seventy-eight. Thirty-six. Thirty-six. Very well, indeed. A dais uh, turning around to respond to Antigonus does fall asleep from his horse, and he just slumps off of it and falls to the side, prone on the ground. The horse might as well. That's true, the horse as well will do the same, maybe. Uh, yeah, I know that they don't have that much health, so yeah, uh, it also would fall, thankfully, not on top of a dais. No. To the other side, the horse. I'll take it, the blue boy doesn't. Nice. The blue boy, no, you need like another a good amount more <laughs> getting down with that. But yeah, I've gone from lowest to highest for this one, so indeed, a dais and the horse fall asleep. Okay. But okay, so let's skip that through That would be me turns. done. All right, Panda, it's your turn. Uh, Yarling, what would you like to do? Uh, is the vines still up? They are, right? They are for now, yeah. Okay. Um, Yali, could my could my spear go? So, for instance, if I was to move um, here, would I be able to hit the blue guy? I don't know if spear is reach. I think it's not, right? Yeah, I don't I know. Think it might be actually. No I spear is. isn't. Yeah, that's right. I don't the hike is. is reach. The spear yes. isn't. Okay, I can throw my spear though. You certainly can. Um, so I'm going to step back a little bit okay. um, and throw my spear at the dude. Do I get advantage because he's prone? Uh, he's restrained, so yeah. He's restrained, yeah. Well, on the first roll, I got a nut 20, so I'm not even going to roll twice. Okay, absolutely. Um, <laughs> you should roll twice, though, for my home rule. 13 on the other one. Okay. Um, oh, two nat 20s is an insta-kill? Is that what it is? No, it's a miracle roll, so something special happens. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> it's I the god I- roll. I wish I, I wish I got another one now. Um, so that is two damage, but but I'm gonna use my psychic blades again. Uh, I'm gonna sp- spend my final bardic inspiration um, to fire almost like another spectral spear to go at him. Okay. Um, which does an additional. I'm not even kidding. That's double sixes. Oh, nice. nice. So the total damage is 12 plus. You're a, a was, new... it? Yeah. was it? Was it two, two piercing yeah. and 12 psychic, right? Right. So, okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so you got two piercing. How did I roll? How do I roll two sixes? Yeah, you must... No, you, you then... can't have got two piercing, surely, with a crit. What do I do? What do I do for crit? yeah, for crits? You roll the the dice twice, so you should roll two d8s for the spear. Yeah. Oh no, it's a D, it's a D10 for the spear. Oh, well, if you're two- wheeling it two-handed, but that doesn't work throwing it. Yeah. You gotta oh, throw right, it right. Um, so that is six. All right, six plus twelve um, is eighteen. Well, it'd be it'd be six plus two plus twelve, right? Oh right, yeah. Is that yeah, your I, I thought you were adding them together. Yeah. Okay, sure. So we'll go with that. Yeah, absolutely. And it does. Uh, this is the first attack that actually makes him rear round and look at you, Yarling, as this spear sticks in his side, just raises his hand up slowly to it and rips it. Um, not rips it, sort of um, snaps the spear, as like, a, like, a, like just like an arrow, and leaving the head of the spear in his arm, but otherwise just throwing the shaft of it to the side. I will kill you for that. <laughs> for snapping your spear? Yeah, it's my <laughs> dancing. Yeah. That spear's been with her for a while now. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, it's made her just mad. <laughs> yep. Herodotus All right. sees that the pole just snap and just goes crazy. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't oh, yeah, he wield a spear? Doesn't he wield a spear? He does have a spear, yeah. I could just steal his after it. So Very well. So, Pro, it's your turn. Oh, my turn. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm, uh, okay, so first insight bonus action. So, have him roll deception. Yeah, sure. Uh, oh, jeez. Nine. Uh, is that at least he's got to beat it or? Yeah, he's got to beat it. Yeah, I rolled a 10, dang it. Yeah, there, so. yeah, he does not go off that move. That's okay. I mean, I still get sneak attack because he's restrained. I just yes. want to be able to sneak attack him afterwards. Uh-huh. But yeah, as I'm attacking him, I'm just going to yell out, stand down and stop killing people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so that's a 21 to hit. 21 to hit. He'll try and parry it with his reaction, but it's still not enough as it finally yeah. strikes true. So go ahead and roll damage. Okay. Yeah, nice. Okay. Uh, 15 piercing damage. Very nice indeed. So that is... All right, okay. And yeah. so I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll kind of fake out his strike, wait till he goes to parry, and mm. then I'll stab right into the wound in his arm that uh, Yalin created. Yeah, sure, effectively opening the wound more. So the spearhead yeah. falls out and he begins to bleed from his arm. All the way yep. down, he gets a red coat of blood all the way down his otherwise blue arm. Mm -hmm. But he just, um, he lets out a growl of pain and says, you'll all die here. <laughs> Nothing to me. And um, he'll sort of lift his spear up and catch it and he'll um, wind it back over his shoulder and he'll launch it at full speed at you, um, Kara. Um, seeing as you, seeing as he's noticed you are the one who's cast this spell, so he can multi attack and make two ranged attacks by throwing two spears at you uh, a 15 and a 26. No, sorry, that's uh, a 14 and a 9. Yeah, a 14 and a 9. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so 14 and 9? Yeah. Both miss. Both miss, nice. absolutely. Cool. <laughs> Right, so that will end his turn. Still trapped in his <laughs> bindings, unfortunately. Uh, all right, so, Kara, it's your turn. Um, okay, can you describe to me his weapon and armor? Uh, yeah, he's basically without armor, except for a small leather harness, which he wears on his upper body. His lower half is more like a, a kilt, but also underneath it, he wears sort of high trousers, which seems to be like they'd be eight sizes too big for anyone in this party. And his spear, what is it made out of? Um, I guess a wooden metal, simple, you know, uh, simple spear, not nothing too uh, fashionable. Um, okay. Oh, I see what you're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you could. Um, there's pieces of metal on his harness and stuff if you want to do that. <laughs> I just, I don't know how effective it was going to be. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll we'll go for it. Um, so I'm going to just look at. I'm going to drop the vines first. Okay. Oh wow. Concentration. Well, yeah, it's concentration. So okay. I got it. Um, so the vine, as the vines slowly start to recede back into the earth, I'm like looking at him with my hands up and my eyes flash red for a moment, okay. and you kind of see like this smoky steam, like smoke rising from my fingertips that starts to move very directly toward him, and I'm gonna cast heat metal. All right, that's a safe for me, right? I think, or I, don't, I haven't cast it before. I don't think so. I think it's a con save, maybe, or Let's see. Looking it up. Uh, a creature in physical contact with the object takes two d8 fire damage when you cast the spell. I can use a bonus action to cause the damage again if they're holding or wearing the object. They have to succeed on a con save or drop it. Okay, well, I'll have him with his con save, uh, but effectively he's wearing it. Uh, so I don't know why the rules specify that, because like, I, I don't know how you drop. Yeah, what are you going to do? He, he, would, he, would just take, he would just yeah. take the damage then. He wouldn't just drop his yeah. wooden spear. He, he still, still takes his 2d8 damage for sure, because he rolled right. a full constitution. So go ahead and roll 2d8 damage. Uh, double three, so six. Six, damage. sure. It begins to sort of sear into his skin. You can see him pull, trying to pull the harness off, and as he does, you can see his skin sticking to the uh, the very hot metal, um, the clasps of it, and sort of beginning to pull his own skin off, uh, leaving like big red marks where this burning metal has touched his bare skin. And he has disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks until the start of her next turn. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Very <laughs> there you cool. Go. All right. All right. Um, so, Antigonus, it's your time. What would you like to do? That vulture is hungry again, finishing off the liver, and it will dive down towards his liver and go for another snack. All right, go ahead and roll a spiritual weapon attack. Dart, is it? Oh, is it still advantage? No, the tangle's gone, yeah? That nope. tangle has gone, yeah. I should have done this in the other order. Okay, yeah, that's only a 10 to hit. A 10 um, is unfortunately not hit. So, yeah, it swoops by and misses, and so I will... Um, kind of move yeah right around here so i'm between the two of them and i will then cast guiding bolt so i will strike my mace across my shield the sparks will fly up green and congeal together and shoot blast towards them absolutely yeah go ahead and roll a attack a spell attack roll man 11 11 yeah it just goes into the distance unfortunately down the road hits the log and it starts to sort of catch a green flame almost but mm -hmm. it does not hit him uh, I will say, um, 
Uh, I'm missing you on purpose. You can yield. Yield for your life. <laughs> yeah, he'll answer that on his turn. Um, <laughs> Herodotus, it's your turn. Oh, he's, he's, he's looking a bit worried. Um, does he look like he's hurt? A, a little bit. A little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. He's, well, he's got a big open wound on his arm, and he's got sort of patches of burning on his skin. So I guess, yeah, he looks yeah. like he's hurt. I will just point my staff at him again and, <laughs> and try to zap him. All right, Obviously, sure. It's not got advantage, so that's probably a miss. Uh, that's going to be a 13, I believe. Yeah, 13. That's a miss. Uh, 13, sorry? Yeah, it is a miss, unfortunately. As this um, basically does hit him, but he can still sort of power through. You can see the shock traveling up his arm, but he just clasps his fist hard over his spear. And you can see him just bear it. Okay. Don't rub <laughs> it in. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right, so it's uh, Yara, uh, Yarling's turn. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, she's going to... She's pissed. So she's going to pull out that dagger that she had almost ready earlier from the night before sure. and just do um, a really quick spin and try and throw it at him. All right. Uh, I miss. Hmm. Unfortunate. Uh, yeah, goes wide, uh, clatters into the stone of the road and then into the bushes behind. Um, does not hit him, though. Yes, surrender. <laughs> yeah, you're really scaring him, guys. <laughs> you should Zero touch damage your knees. <laughs> it looks so yeah. cool there for a while, and now we yeah. were like, ooh. Well, man, it's like, um, even for a man of his size, he seems to be able to move his body in such a way that he can see these attacks coming almost as you're, as you're winding them up. You can see the like the way your arm's going to move, and he knows the trajectory of these daggers and these these spells and things, and he can just sort of move himself, even though it's just slight movements, and able to dodge all of them. Um, but is that on your turn, yelling? Uh, I kind of going to do like a oh face, um, and then move behind and <laughs> Yeah, sure, you can do that. All right, so Pruitt, it's your turn. Okay, um, move to there. Um, again, insightful fighting feature. I'm looking for a weakness, so have him make right. his deception check. Sure thing. Let's see what he oh gets. Oh my goodness! You got a five. I got a, I got a nine. Yay! Uh, so <laughs> Finally, yeah. I found his yeah. weakness. You found his weakness. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that he swings wide and uh -huh. always leaves his back open, so that's his weakness now. Sure thing. Um, <laughs> video game boss tactic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll do a dodge roll and no, okay. Uh, yeah. So I'll, as I'm attacking him, I'll say. Uh, surrender or die, and uh, I will attempt to attack him. Ah, jeez, twelve to hit. Twelve A is not a hit, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not tall enough to we Even reach the weak advantage. spot that I just no, found. He's not restrained anymore. Yeah, no, we lost our advantage. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can sneak attack him, but I don't have advantage. So, mm -hmm. okay, that's the end of my turn. All right, he'll turn around to you, Pruitt, and he'll again multi-attack you with a disadvantage until things this turn. He's not rolling well either, and if it's any consolation, does a 15 hit? Oh, it actually one. does, because I'm not yet proficient in the shield that I wield. Oh, uh, right, that's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, so two nat ones. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. just not doing so great, this guy, unfortunately. 16 piercing, oh. though, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So you can roll high and down. Yeah, I will use my reaction and cast Gift of Clay, so I'll absorb six of those. All right, sure, you take 10 damage. Gifted yeah. Clay shield pops in front of him at the last second and kind of mm -hmm. slows the blade down. Yeah, sure, but it does pierce through and um, in quite some fashion as well. As you can just feel through it, no pain at first, but as you look down, you can see him pulling out a bloodied spearhead from you, and eventually the adrenaline gives way and you can just feel a sharp pain beginning to overtake, and the sort of you feel this damp feel on the inside of your arm as you've been stabbed by this guy's spear. <sighs> okay. And he'll turn around to all of you and say, Yes, you're right. It's not too late to surrender. Own oh. yourselves before me, and perhaps, perhaps, I'll let you live until Athens. Not surrender. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> well, right, that yeah. sounds like a good deal. <laughs> all right, it's your turn. Okay. Um, I am going to go ahead and bonus action that heat metal damage. Yep, sure, it's 2d8 from a con saving throw. Let's see what he gets. Um, he rolled 21, so he'll take half damage. Okay, I rolled 9 damage. Okay, so he'll take 4 damage. 
um, things he starts to let The con save knows. is not for the damage. Oh, right. The That's con the save is to determine whether he drops the object. Okay, is there not a save involved at all in Heat Metal Damage? You'd have to What's take that? off the armor. If he chooses to throw off his armor, ah, yeah. Fair enough. Okay, yeah. uh, sure thing. So he'll take nine damage then. Yeah. All right, I'll add that on. All right, sure. Does that end your turn? And then I'll just look at him and be like, you're the one who needs to surrender. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Indeed, he will take note of yeah, that. He'll answer on shouting, turn. surrender, and killing. <laughs> <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> so I'm taking this. It's your turn. All right, that vulture will try again, swoop down and pierce towards his liver. All right, sure thing. Mm, a little better. 14 to hit. Uh, 14 is a miss, unfortunately, as he just <clears throat> still is paying more attention to that than to Kara, and Kara gets this sort of... Um, did you use an action or anything, Kara? I thought that was a bonus action, that thing. It is. I didn't use an action. All right. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah, go, all right. Ahead. go ahead. No, it's okay. I mean, no, we've already started moving on, so... Um, I didn't have an action to do. I, I chose not to. I do. Oh, I see. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Uh, I'm going to run up in melee, so maybe the spiritual weapon can move to the side there, Harry. Um, okay. I'll pull out the new Mace of Hunger, and I will rear back and swing it across to try to clip him in the back. All right, sure, go ahead. Roll a Mace attack. <sighs> Seven. Wow. Seven. Yeah. He just deflects it with his shield easily. That's, <sighs> and as his shield passes, his face is revealed. He's got a big grin from beneath that bristly dark blue beard. As though, but you can see there's blood on his on his teeth already, as though he's already started to um, cough up blood, but he still seems ready for fighting. Uh, I scream at him, come at me! Come at me! <laughs> All right. Sure. Right. Um, is that in your turn? That's my turn. Cool. Herodotus, it's your turn. What would you like to do? He will um, again attempt with the rose petals mm -hmm. at first level. I surrender. <laughs> and I just wanted to, it's because I want to be able to click on that to see if it works. It does work. That's 20 does. from 5d8. You still need two more d8s, it looks like. No, no, no. I cast it at first I cast level. It at first level. Uh, oh, it goes from lowest health to highest, right? First, you want to explain what your radius for this is? A 20 foot cube? It's a 20 foot cube. Um, yeah. And it only works on people that are awake and new yeah, my target. Sure. So obviously, it's not going to target mate Eden is already asleep. Okay. It would only target Blue Boy. Yeah, uh, where would you like it? Here or here or? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just over, as long as it's over the Blue Boy, it doesn't matter. I'm wondering if it gets through it or not. Uh, let me just double check. It just says creatures it. within 20 feet of you choose, and are affected in an ascending order of their current hit points. Could he make a diagonal square, and so the blue guy's on the corner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then I think it would it would get me in there. <laughs> it's true. Because you've got Antigonus right next to him, Pruitt right next to him, and then me. I'm pretty like, sure oh. it, it's just creatures. So if I, okay, so it might be everyone then, yeah. Yeah. I'm so fine. What, I have enough hit points. Where me. would you like, would you like it? Yeah. <laughs> would you like it? Like, Nap yeah. time. I will, I'll, yeah. Yeah, I will do it um, the top, so the corner, so the bottom right corner will be him. All right, so, sure. Um, so yelling. 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 <laughs> Thanks for not killing me. Yeah, sure. uh, yelling, you feel an overwhelming sense of drowsiness come over you. How many um, hit points has she got? 18. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yelling, you just sort of blink once and then twice, no. and then suddenly you're just <laughs> trying to lose interest in the battle, it feels like, and then eventually you just sort of feel um, your daggers clatter to the ground as you drop them, and you just fall back asleep. <laughs> oh, well, that was a bit of a, that was a, bit of a mistake. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. That must be my action, and then... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I will make my way over to her. Okay, sure. Um, Panda, you are asleep, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, <laughs> correct, no. I am asleep. Uh, the absolute perfect timing with Panda playing after Herodotus. Um, but yeah, you're asleep as um, Herodotus runs over to you. It's the last thing you see before you drift off into the land of Hypnos. Uh, Pruitt, it's your turn. <laughs> uh, I'm going to attack him again. Just going right. to take a nap. There we go. Yeah. Uh, 24 to hit. 24 definitely hits. He can't even <laughs> yeah. that. So you go ahead and roll damage. And I will ch uh, use my reaction to Gift of Fire, Channel Divinity. Ooh. All right. Oh, what is that? More damage? Yeah, it's 2d10 plus 3 fire damage. 2d10 plus 3. 2d10 plus 3. Do you want to roll that or do you want me to roll it? 
13 plus 3, 16 fire damage. Oh, and nice. Damage on top of and my sneak attack will do 11 piercing damage. So again, I'll fake out his strike, and then I'll stab near his kidney. All right, sure. Try and just side so guess. 16 from that, and then from you, Pruitt. Um, 11. 11, sure. Uh, so that's 27 points of damage, I think. Yep. So, uh, mm-hmm. um, uh, and he also needs to make a con save. Oh, right. Well, yeah, this is a strong ability. It's, uh, my, it's my channel divinity. I'm fair getting fair enough. Uh, con yeah. save. Uh, 17? Yeah, he passes. Okay. All right. What not, would have happened to him if not? Not on be, fire. Right? Yeah, be on fire. Sure thing. Well, he will now use his turn to um, try and attack Prude again. He still has the effects of heat metal on him, though, it seems. So... Um, does he make the get the con save every time, or is it just the first time round? Oh, he's concentrating. Interesting. Okay, well, for the time being, we'll say that it's gone through. Um, and takes a shield bash at you, Pruitt, for an 8, uh, a 25 with oh, a spear, though. Yeah. Uh, and an 11. Yeah, 25 hits. All right, okay. so it does 11 piercing damage to you. I'm still up. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Uh, again, another another hole just joins that side to the one that he um he initially did earlier. Um, yeah. So basically, trading blows for blows. Um, I'm just gritting my teeth, staring at him eye to eye sure as thing. the spear is embedded in it in my chest. Yeah. He pulls it out um, again. Again, it's was that a disadvantage? Question mark. They're, they're all disadvantage. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, Kara, it's your turn. I'm just gonna keep with that heat metal damage. Yeah. Well, then wearing on the creature must succeed in the constitution saving throw for the doesn't drop the object. Not worded very clearly. Yeah, these spells are pretty hard to sometimes decipher, but I think it's going off as planned that one actually. So yeah, go ahead and roll two d eight. Yeah, really poor rolls, only three damage. Three damage. Yeah, that is not a fantastic roll, but no worries. You one see, and a two. You're just starting to smell his flesh sort of sizzle underneath the um, the armor. I am gonna take this opportunity to move back a little bit into the tree line. Gotcha. Okay, just to remind you, you still have an action if you wanted to do any kind of, you know, spell or something. Or... Unfortunately, my other spells are mostly all AoE, and I don't want to all hurt right. my friends. So. No worries. Oh, I don't mind doing that. <laughs> you can take, like, a dodge action and make your AC higher if you want. Oh, that's not a bad idea. I'll yeah. go in the tree line, and I'll take the dodge action. Sure thing. Understood. So, yeah. Um, Antigonus, it's your turn. What do you like to do? All right. I'm t- telling that vulture, eat him. And then have a dive down again. That's better. Okay, 23 to hit. That is certainly a hit, yeah. Um, spiritual weapon. I'm not used to it. Hitting. Okay, 1d8 plus 4. Um, there we go. 11 damage on the nice. liver plucker. And then uh, seeing that that finally succeeds, I'll rare back with the Mace of Hunger. And yeah, there we go. 21 to hit. Yeah, yeah. that hits indeed. Okay, so that is... Headmaster. Sorry, new item. You just gave it to me. I think I had it right. It's uh, just a 1d6 mace and then another d6 damage. Yeah, plus your strength modifier, or whatever that is. Okay, so 2d6 plus 1. That's going to be 8 total damage, um, eight, six eight. of which is, or 5 of which is necrotic. All right, sure thing. Good to know. Yeah, okay. Definitely, you can see his movement starting to get slower now. Uh, he begins to be able to dodge less abilities as he can't sort of work his huge mass around. Uh, and you finally feel your attacks beginning to hit home on him. So yeah. um, I'll see you again. I said, come at me. <laughs> All right. It'll respond to that maybe next time. Uh, Herodotus, it's your turn. I will uh, kneel down beside Yarlin and I'll shake her away. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, my dear. The strangest thing had happened. I didn't see you through the trees. <laughs> and I'll wake her up. Very well. That is an action to wake her up. It is. Okay. Yeah, yep, sure. Okay, indeed. You do and then feel I cast it. fireball. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you are still prone, but you are awake. Uh, so it's your turn, Yarling. Unless you'd like to move anywhere, Herodotus, or? Uh, no. We'll just stay there. All right, sure. So, uh, it's your turn, Yarling. What would you like to do? Uh, I take it my action would be just getting up, um, out of prone. Yeah. Uh, well, the half well, no, no, no. It's half, half your movement speed, sorry, yeah. Half your movement. Oh, okay. Um, I will... <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, does he look like he's uh, pretty he looks, hurt? Yeah, he looks very wounded. Okay, I don't. I don't have really anything I can do, so I'm probably just going to move. I'll tell you what. I'll move um, over. 
Right. I'm gonna move uh, here. Okay. Um, and I'm going to actually no. I'll move here, so I'll go from right. there, there. Um, and I will cast um poison spray. All right. Okay. It's a con save, isn't it, for me? I think it is. Yes. All right. So he got a twenty and takes no damage from. Yeah, you. that's yeah. <laughs> yeah, the splashes against him, and it seems to just drip off his skin as though it just they just apparently immune to it or something. Um, but there you go, Panda. Is that end your turn? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, then Pruitt, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Okay. I will. First, I will attack. Okay. Okay, uh, dirty 20 to hit. Uh, that will indeed hit him, yeah, sure thing. Go ahead and cool. roll damage. Sneak attack. Nice. <laughs> okay. 15 magical piercing damage. Wow, that's very good, but it's not enough to take him down. Just, he still remains up. Um, I see, just so sort of, you sing the spear and you can feel it uh, like having found a point on his patch of his skin where it's just passing between bones and it sinks deeper into his internal organs. Uh, yeah. Like a good few inches on the spear as it goes in and you pull it out. It goes, it comes in and out with extreme ease and he just mm-hmm. clutches the hole that's there. And as you see blood beginning to pool over his hand and pour between his fingers. Okay. And with that, I'll pull out my sword, still making eye contact with him. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll yell out. And taking this, I let you finish him, and I will bonus action disengage. 15, 15, okay. And I will whisper to Kara, Kara, I would appreciate some help. I am not feeling very well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that brings it round to his turn. And yeah. as you're uh, moving away from him, he'll he'll just let out sort of a blood barking of a the madman on his final steps of life, and I'll say, not so easy, and um, he'll throw his spear at you. <laughs> From where... Is he in range? Um, he is in range, I think, of a spear of 20 feet, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's see if he gets disadvantage. I mean, he's going to have disadvantage anyway because of the heat metal, so, yeah. Oh, okay. that's true, yeah. He always has heat metal on, right? So, two spears with his... Um, she throws his last mm, one as well. So 16. 16 will hit. All right, so that does uh, eight piercing. Okay, I'm down. All right, um, that will end his turn. Because <laughs> that's all he can do. Um but yeah, sure. Uh, so you're down, sure. The spear just flies through and it just uh, almost impales you. Do you feel it sink into your skin and you fall back in front of Kara? But it is your turn, Kara. Okay, I'm going to see seeing Kraywit <laughs> fall. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, let's see. I... Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and inflict my heat metal damage. Oh, okay. Action. Uh, three and a six, so nine. Um, that is enough to kill him. So go ahead and explain how he dies, then, Kara, because you can finally bring him down. So, um, the all the little metal bits in his armor are just like searing hot at this point, and they're just basically like melting through his body until he just can't take it anymore and he just collapses down. Sure thing, yeah. It's like having a brand on its skin for way too long and eventually there's, there's a negative area of flesh where it should be. As you can see, it's sinking deeper and deeper until he starts forcing himself to try and tear his harness from him, but he can't. And as he tries to pull it, the harness just pulls out more than it would do damage if it stayed on. He separates a bit forcibly from his skin until he just collapses forward, um, staring at the Yukara as he falls face down in the road. Dead. I told you, you should have surrendered. <laughs> but... oh, I did. <laughs> Not you, Herodotus. And then I'll um, go down to Prewit and be like, oh, Prewit, I'm, I'm so sorry. And I'm just going to reach down and um, grab Prewit. And as usual, all the tattoos on me will kind of start to move a little bit. And kind of, you'll see that green flow into Prewit. And I'm going to cast Cure Wounds at second level. All right, sure thing. I go ahead and roll your <laughs> that two d eight plus wisdom, I think. Yep. Uh, so ten total. All right, so hey. deep coming back to consciousness, um, seeing the spear, the st- by, still by your side, which he threw, um, but you are at least awake. But yeah, that will end the combat. And what we'll do is we'll come back to the uh, culmination of the combat after a break, I think. Okay, welcome back, everybody. And yeah, we just left the party in the wake of victory, um, having overcome the challenge set forth by Adeus's guard. 
um, blue skinned gentleman of some dis undiscernible race for now, who um, is now bleeding in a puddle of his own blood in the floor ahead of him, uh, having been welcomed to several different spear wounds and some nasty burns as well. But yeah, Pruitt, you were brought back to, uh, not back to life, but you were resuscitated by um, Kara. Um, so I'll leave the party there to take the lead. Uh, this is uh, a dire moment here. We need to get them off the road. We need to get him tied up now. Antigonus, take him off the road. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so I'll oh, grab he, him. He will be awake soon. You need to... Uh... Yeah, I will tie him up. I'll hog tie him, and then I'll pull him in the bushes off the road. Yarling's just uh, kicking the corpse of the blue guy. <laughs> Fair enough. And then eventually we'll go over and pick up all his spears, and we'll um, see if they're uh, like a good replacement. Yeah, uh, they are a bit heavy for you. Um, they seem to be made of a sturdier material than what yours would be made of, and mainly made for someone of his height compared to yours. The spear was a lot different from your one that you lost in the fight, unfortunately. Am I able to take one with me to to potentially get broken? Or um, uh, Antigonus, do you think you can um, use that axe to make this one shorter? Uh, I can, but I, I, I let's let's collect what we can and get them all off the road or make it look like the tree fell on them or something. I, we just need to not be around when anyone else comes through. And I taking us take him far enough into the woods that he cannot see the path. The rest Kara of you, let's We'll go to up. his horse and uh -huh. wake up the horse and bring him off. Yeah, him. sure. So you can take the horse with you as well. So we, yeah. And I'll take him away. I'll take him another yeah, sure. 50 feet so, back in the woods. Behind I will go cast to tech magic. Yeah, absolutely. Get the tech magic off before you leave, and you'll notice that around um, under the beard of the uh, blue gentleman that's on the floor, there seems to be something magical. I will take that. Yeah, I'll it tell, is a... Obviously, Yarlin's obviously hovering around. I'll tell. Oh, oh, get the necklace. It's magic. Phil, um, pick it up. Yeah. Um. I didn't. So... I, didn't I didn't say eat it. <laughs> Uh, right, so yeah, you pick up the necklace and um, from beneath the beard of the guy, you have to lift his head up and you see his eyes still open as you reach underneath his beard and unclasp this um, sort of uh, sort of like a white blue gold necklace that he was wearing around his neck. Herodotus, uh, do you know what it is? Oh, not yet, darling. Oh, yeah, I've got time to have a look at it. Yeah, she'll put her hand out and offer it to him. Take it and put it in my pocket. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, everyone. Or, or, sorry. Um, get the bodies and put them near the tree. Let's get on our horses and head back as soon as we can. I'll give Palamides a whistle. <clears throat> so you, uh, do some scouting. Kara, do you think you could um, use some shrubbery to cover the bodies? I could. Yes, I could try. Um, has someone? Look to see if they have anything of value. Uh, I believe Herodotus had a look. Um, Pru will also quickly investigate them for money. Yeah, sure. You actually welcome to do that. Nice. Um, <laughs> That's a twenty-three. Sure, you'll find all the jamming they have. We'll say that each of those have one d six, and the big guy probably has a bit more. Let's go three d six. Get five drachmi from the uh, poor clerics there, um, and from the larger guy, we'll do a, a d20, I think. Like, yeah. uh, 18 from the larger gentleman who had a pouch of drachmi on his uh, on his belt. Okay, so 23 drachmi is in party funds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. All right, so um, what you wanted to cover up the body, so. Yeah, I'd like to, if I may, use druid craft to kind of have some like moss and grassy flowery things just grow up and looks uh, like old bodies if people see yeah. them <laughs> or or even just like hide them in the weeds kind of yeah sure i can say you could do that yeah um you give a good a good attempt at sort of making them all encapsulated by uh weeds and shrubbery and stuff as you say um before he wakes up i will try to do a non-lethal attack and try to knock him out <laughs> Hard to tell when he's asleep already if it's worked, but you punch the sleeping man in the face if that's what you want to do. He'd wake, <laughs> he'd wake up if it didn't work. Yeah. You can, um, you can I'm wait until use prestidigitation. Prestidigitation on all the blood and stuff and clear it all up. Okay, like sure. Very well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you managed to 
see what you can make a perception check, I guess, or just to see how much you can uh, you can see, you can find. <laughs> Uh, that's a 12, that's 15. 15, yeah, sure. I'd say, yeah, you do a good job of it. Um, oh, making the work we look fairly yeah. similar to it did on the way. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, I say perhaps Antigonus, perhaps if you waited until he was just opening his eyes, and then you hit him, and it's yeah, like... Yeah, sure, yeah, that, that's... <laughs> uh, thank you for your logic, I appreciate well, hitting it. Would have, <laughs> hitting him would have woken him up anyway, so... <laughs> I suppose not if it was intended to knock him out, maybe, but, you know, um, mm -hmm. yeah. You punch him square in the jaw as soon as he was opening his eyes, and indeed, you assume he's knocked out. Then he'll roll a 1d4 for his for his struggle. So he'll awaken in three hours. Great. Um, feeling pretty good about that. I will, um, you know, keep him next. Well, yeah. We, we have his horse out. if you want to put him on the horse. Yeah, I was going to say, let's get him on the horse. Uh, if anyone asks, oh, sorry, I should be in character voice. Um, uh, yeah, I'll get him on his horse if anyone asks. Um, he had a he had a tough night, and he's drunk. Let's I, go back. I It is either that, or we could go through uh, the Church of Prometheus outside the city. We could use that to get into the Church of Hypnos. We could go that road, too. That's probably a safer route. I think we should still have a story, though. So, yes, he drank a little too much, got in trouble. We're just taking him home. Sure. This... Um, the... the... You talking about my colony? It does not connect. No, 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 not the colony. But there was a church of Prometheus down there, was there not? In the, uh, in the tunnels next to the church of Hypnos. No, it did no. not connect. They were not welcome, even in the even in that part. Oh, yelling yeah, during all this. Oh, sorry, go on, go on. Uh, is there another way in? Could we? We uh, may still be able to go through that church of Hypnos. I don't yes. know the way around. If we around. can find the way into the mountain tunnels. That could take way too long. Perhaps we should just try to skirt around the road so that we don't meet that other party coming straight down. I think that's the better plan, yes. I don't know the other way in. Yarling will uh, take off her headpiece, put it on the, the guy's head. He, he's bold, correct? So she'll yes. kind of put that on. Um, anything on him that could um, make him stand out. So for instance, the blue parts of the clothing and things, yeah. she'll uh, tear off and kind of almost try her best to make him look like a like a traveling companion of ours or something yeah. he, he doesn't basically try and make him look nothing like how he does <laughs> and then i will also take wine and spill it on him down his shirt to make it look like he's had a bender and make him reek of alcohol all right fair enough yeah sure <laughs> take some dirt and start rubbing it on his face <laughs> yelling, like am i doing this right <laughs> this poor guy okay very well uh, um, yeah I wanted to send uh, Palamedes up to just check the area to make sure that there's no one coming. In yeah, well, he will come back to you saying, uh, there, 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 there's, there's, there's several people coming from the south. Uh, they may be with you soon. Let's get off the road and then we'll yeah. come back to the road later. Yeah, we'll do that and get off completely. Yeah, yeah so off we're going to get out of sight. Absolutely, yeah. Easy enough to pull them to the side. Oh, they've already been covered by shrubbery and you can pull him to the side, though, top of his horse. No, 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 uh, we're going off to the side, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So you're pulling him yeah. to the side with the, on top of the horse and stuff, um, and you've left the bodies under the, under the shrubbery and things like that. And you've done a tried to clean up the road and things. Um, you will see from behind the tree line eventually, but there is a, a group of people coming along. It's not the heroes. It's just uh, a bunch of um, other travelers who do the Good Samaritan thing and move this log out of the way of the road, <laughs> rolling it to the side. But yeah, it's not long until they pass as well. <laughs> we're traveling right back toward the city off yeah. the road yeah, we're back just towards Athens uh, yeah. banana sh banana route yeah <laughs> yep <laughs> do okay. they have bananas in ancient Greece uh -huh. they do right I'm sure they find a way to get them boomerang <laughs> boomerang a boomerang route okay that would be more less likely I think actually it's probably true yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay um, yeah uh, you can easily get out um, to back to Athens until uh, the trees sort of thin out and there is only road and plains between you and Athens at that point Okay, um, the main gate we use the drunk story. It seems to be fair enough. Uh, just uh, make sure Yarling does the talking. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> okay. Well, I did catch her sleeping. Um, having gone through the gate of Athens before, how tight is the security? 
I mean, there'd be no questions asked, pretty much. <laughs> if you're sporting, right? Him, that's what I was wondering. <laughs> so, like, you're not going to be like, no, not everyone coming into Let's make this way harder than Harry and Tim. Stealth checks. Oh so my like, goodness! I see like a yeah. hundred guards at the gate. <laughs> Literally, no guard. Comes up to you. you guys go up to the guards. Like this guy's just drunk. He's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> Like the guards then might be like, okay, hang on. <laughs> is, is he still bound? Like you said, you yeah. hog tied him. I hog tied him, yeah. So that's going to oh, make it a little bit harder to. Are you talking about a literal yeah. hog tie or like a. You, you I feel like as an orc, I would, I would like have killed boars and actually done that. Um, okay, if you hog tie him, it's going to be different because that's the explicitly. Yeah, but once, we, once we get him on the horse, I will just make sure that he is like bound to the horse, but not. Um, not hog tied. Not not hog- not, yeah. Just, just, just secured so he won't fall. Yeah, yeah sure. On this stuff. For his own safety. Pro will uh, periodically hit him over the back of the head with the pummel of his sword when he wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. it was asleep for three hours. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. But that's not enough to get back. <laughs> <laughs> will be like big bruises oh, yeah, sure. on the back of his head. Actually, uh, well, yeah, yeah, no, we'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's not long before you're back to Athens. Uh, you can see the uh, like um, volume of people increasing in, along the road. You'll see from the forest as you're walking through it, the heroes Action. moving along. They'd all thinned out by now. Very few people left following them. They'd indeed been given what seemed to be um, some horses along the way, as well as a few attendants to carry some, uh, you know, uh, favors. So- so actually, Harry, I'm sorry. I would like to backtrack uh, a little bit no. um, before we get to Athens. I'll just say to the group, um, before we go in, I think it might be wise for us to have a fair share of questions that we ask him and then you hand them over. Not a bad, Not a bad plan. <laughs> but uh, what if he tells them that we've... Um done some extra questioning the last thing we want is more i don't think it would matter i think the issue is if he starts crying and screaming we don't have enough of an area that we know is open and free we can try to intimidate him but one cry could could really send us the wrong way we look like we're trying to capture someone which we are but (laughs) that's true they've given us they're supposed to be giving us some favors in return for this guy. We'll just make sure we get to ask him all the questions we want. Yes, that's uh, true. That, that's that's good. Yeah, yeah, that was. A, yeah, I think let's just take him back. Okay, so we'll just do that and cut to Athens, and we have the description. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But I mean, where do you want to take him inside Athens? Uh, to the Temple of Trivia. Tr- Tr- all right. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um. So there's very few people inside the temple except, um. The woman from before, Pira, she's there. And did, with did they stipulate to take him in at night? I forget if that they, was a part of it. Specify, they didn't specify. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, moving in, you see the dead Pira from before, and she's with Cleo, and she's um, managed to um, sate Cleo's curiosity, and they seem to be having a much more pleasant conversation now, as um, she's showing her around different murals in the temple and things, holding her hand until um, she sees you come back, and she'll instantly let go of Pira's hand and run over to you to give you a big hug around the um, around the legs there, yelling. Hmm. She'll uh, pat her head. Um, have they been treating you well enough here? And she says, yeah, yeah, they gave me some food, they gave me some wine, we, get, we gave me um, some, some, another dagger and things. Anything I asked them, really, they, they, they got for me. It was good fun. The, you had wine? And she says, yeah, yeah, a bunch. It, was, it wasn't very good, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't think I have a big taste for it. Let's keep it that way. And she's going to shoot daggers at <laughs> the woman. <laughs> yeah. Very, he's been indulging in giving people wine, yeah, sure. Um, and she'll say, oh, oh good, you're, you're all back, safe and sound. Um, is, is that the person of yes, interest? Yes. Indeed. Very well. Oh, well, do wait here. If you put him in the back, if you wait here for some time, by nightfall, um, the, the three figures that you previously had a conversation with will return. No names mentioned. We'll, we will wait here with him. Once he wakes up, we'll ask him some questions. Very well. Make sure not to let him speak to people in the temple or reveal himself in any way, of course. Mm. Of course not. Very well. I'll, I, I will go and inform um, my, my, my boss, my patron. And she'll uh, excuse herself. Um, talking to just everyone else uh, in the party, 
Now, it seems we do have an opportunity to question him. Are we going to try and conceal our identity? Are we going to try and claim that we saved him? Are we going to do nothing of the kind? He will remember us. We didn't knock him out straight away. That is true. His man did attack his... uh, uh, His man attacked a fellow man, so... We could claim that we were saving him, but uh, it is a stretch of the truth at this point. I'm still of the mindset that the moment that he's awake, he cries foul, and we, we, privacy is just not something we can afford. Even in this temple, there's attendants around. There's, she just said, make sure he talks to no one. I'm, I'm still worried. I'd rather is keep. There's not a back room or something that we can go to. Yeah, yeah, yeah I had the impression of alcove, but that's all. Just curtained, dang. I'm going to make sure he's gagged okay. so he can't scream out. Sure. That's, that's certainly possible, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, when, I, I think we should wait, but that's my call. I can't speak for everyone else. When Pro is gagging him, uh, Yelling's great. And uh, if you wanted to question him, how is he meant to answer like that? And trust well, me, he's... people can scream through gags. Yeah. Uh-huh. This is like the cloth gag, so it's muffled a bit. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm happy to just guard him and, and wait for them to come in. That's <laughs> fast forward if you want to, but. Yeah. Well, sorry, I will prevent another fast forward. <laughs> um, if you over... just want to do that, just if you want to do downtime between that, you certainly can do. I would want to sit down and uh, order some soup and. <laughs> yeah. And identify this necklace. You can order some soup, but I don't know who is around to do that. He'll order some, he'll order some food. If it's well, food if it's... A takeaway, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> it's like, you, know. um, you can order some... would probably go and get him some soup once he's yeah, started. You can go and get oh, there's probably a Chinese place nearby. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get fish and chips. <laughs> yeah. um, you can go and find some um, some soup for him from a nearby um, food stall or something. Cool. I will sit down and identify. I spent 10 minutes identifying this... Uh... This amulet of ultimate power. Oh, right. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, so you identify the amulet. It is um, an amulet of a wayward traveler. What does it do? It basically can create uh, 10 fluid ounces of water once per day. Oh. And the, the water actually comes like pouring out of the um, the sort of caricature the, on the end of the... Um, on the end of the necklace. I will hand that to Yarling. As she's a Egyptian and lives in the desert and will be quite handy for you one day. Uh, <laughs> That's his mental thinking. Yarling, <laughs> conveniently, after 10 minutes have passed, will come back in with some soup. It, uh, it's really hot, so be careful. <laughs> oh, lovely. Here you go. I'll hand it over. Oh, did you find out what it is? Uh, yes, it, yes. Uh, say say this word when you've got it on. Water. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna really like hesitantly put it on, <laughs> kind of like okay. What what word? I've told you the word. It wouldn't have worked without it being well. I don't know what word it'd be. I'm just gonna say watery Greek. Watery Greek, okay. Um, oh, well, water in Greek. I thought you said water. <laughs> yeah. oh, right. Watery Greek. Watery, Watery Greek. Greek. Uh, Drenched Greek. I'm not sure what that was, but we'll. Um, I think it's say, aqua. Yeah, I would have thought so, but I'm I'm probably wrong because Greek's always sometimes the odd, the, you know, the odd one out for these ones. Um, let's look up if you want to look the Greek word for water. Vep or oh, Nero, or let's see how it's pronounced. Oh well, Nero. No. Nero? Yeah. <laughs> what happens? A bit off. Yeah, it's all, all Greek's often the one where it's like, no, we're not doing aqua. But then again, it's because <laughs> it was, that was, you know, a language from before Romantic languages. So it's got no inclination to be the similar to Roman, where Fair. it would be aqua. So, so I say, I say uh, Nero, does anything happen? Yeah, uh, it would same with like the um, pressure of like, say, a, a bathtub. 
um, water begins to pour out onto the temple floor until equivalent of like two glasses of water just pour across <laughs> into the rugs. Uh, and one of the attendants just looks over to you, Galling, and says, uh, probably not a good idea. Thank you. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll instantly get to cleaning it up. Although they, you know. Um, oh, will say, call it, over. say it again. Herodotus, I really appreciate your gifts, but first you make me try and climb a tree and it not work, and then you make me spill water all over a, uh, a temple's floor. I think I'll hold off from saying it again for now, but thank you. Um, oh, but okay. have your soup, okay? And she kind of got to almost back away like, from it. Antigonus, can I talk to you for a second? Uh, yeah, sure. I don't want to take my eyes off this man, but I'm sort of been sitting menacingly, propped him up yeah. against a column or something, and just watching him. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure Yarling and Kara can take care of him. And so uh, Prout will take Antigonus out of earshot of the rest of the party. Yep. <clears throat> Antigonus, uh, you were very uh, reckless in today's fight. You told me not to hold the line, or you told me to hold the line last time. I tried my best. Yes. I worry that this group lacks experience, though. I bought the shield for a reason. I'm planning to be up front. You're very good with your spells. I suggest you stick to that. Sure, but uh, look at this mace here. It, it does a lot of extra power to it, and I can also make myself harder to hit and save you some of the blows at times. I agree, I'll stay back, but I can also extend my life in fights by not spending every bit of magic energy that I have. It's a bit limited right now. But please don't advance if you don't need to. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> it's the orcish term for okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah and we'll go back to the group after that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, yeah. Is there anything the party wishes to do? Because you'll be here for some time. I'm going to say like nope. it took three hours to get there almost and three hours back. Um, so you set off in the morning. So we'll put it around mid-afternoon and you've been asked to wait here until nightfall, which could be in some four or five hours. Hmm. I, I would like to take a long rest. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, if it's four hours, I'm going to go sit in the corner and... Uh... You can take a long rest. rest. I mean, yeah, sure. I see nothing wrong with that. Effectively, um, yeah, that's fine. I'd say so. So you can count yourselves for the benefit of a long rest. And you've also Everybody? got to level four. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> that's good fun. Uh, we'll cover that out of session. But yeah, uh, everybody can do if they wish to. Um, taking turns to watch the prison if you like or to mm -hmm. keep an temple, that type of thing. Cool. All right. Awesome. So yeah, you awake and the temple's natural light, which incurs from the sun outside, is gone. And it is dark out there, but it's been replaced with a warm glow of a brazier that's been lit um, in the temple. Uh, and sure enough, um, we'll say, who's, on, who's the final person to take watch? Antigonus, because, yeah. All right, so Antigonus, you um, see Pyrrha and Aspasia um, rejoining the temple. And um, she instantly comes in, looks around, sees the man. Oh, she doesn't see the man in the alcove at the back. She sees you, Antigonus. And she simply says, um, I take it we have company? You do. He's in the alcove here. Can you clear the temple so no one else can hear? And she looks around and... Um, it would seem that although there's been people in the temple sort of praying, as soon as she looks around, they all stand up and leave without her saying a word. And she just smiles and says, eyes and ears. I wish you had told me that before. We would <laughs> have been easier than... <laughs> we always tend to make things harder than they actually are. <laughs> no, no, no. It pays to have you be cautious in any respect. So call it a welcome bit of subterfuge in my part. We simply want the same answers that you want. But of course, we are looking for those favors at the end, too. Of course. Pericles has given me immense power to help you, as much as I can. But he shan't be joining us. He is, um, he said he was feeling rather unwell, so he sent me in his stead. Well then, let's go back. Uh, everyone else is resting in this back room as well. And I take her through the alcove and let our poor little wine-drizzled hippie man... <laughs> uh, 
put some smelling sure salts or something under his nose and let him come to come to consciousness. Yeah. She'll walk in and look at him and says, "Yes, that does look like him. What happened to him? May I ask? He, he never usually is one to partake too much in wine." Uh, I, we made it simply look as if he did because we imagined that everyone would be suspicious and obviously no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it was a, I am always a fan of people uh, altering perceptions. So very interesting. Well done. Um, was this captured easy or did, did you run into trouble or did anyone see you? As far as we can tell, no one saw us. We took care of his guard and... Uh, he did have a quite a powerful guardian, but he himself mostly napped and has not been conscious since the early on in the fray. Uh, I see. We were alone on the road. We did as best as we can. Very well. We'll have your companions join me in the alcove, and we'll we'll ask this man some long overdue questions, shall we? Very good. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> join yeah. them. Is everybody awake and present for this? Or? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, so uh, in the alcove there, uh, um, Deus has taken the position of Pericles originally sat, um, and next to him sits, with, um, within quite very close distance of him, sits Aspasia on the next chair over. And there are other chairs around this table. As she um, basically steadies herself on the table with one elbow and places her chin in her hand as she watches him awaken after some time. And he just looks around and says, "What's what's going on? Where where am I? What, who, who what happened? I was assaulted on the roads by these murderers." And they look across at each of one of you. What is it you want from me, gold? If go ahead, Pruitt, you talk. To <clears throat> Only to have some questions answered. Let's go ahead, Pruitt. Now I know your name is a mark on you, little one. Don't you? Don't you worry. Des always gets his revenge. Who gets his revenge? Deus. Ooh. Mark my name well. Hmm. Would you like the chance to be able to get any revenge? Well, then you better answer some questions. No. You're going to be threatening me. There's that it. And he'll look across and he'll see Aspasia. And he'll just eventually his like very hard stony visage will melt a little into just a very sort of satisfied groan of recognition and family of understanding and he just says oh yes not a huge surprise that you've got your fingers in this careful who you're dealing with here she's done a lot worse than betrayed people in the past Adeus, we know it was not your idea to ring up all the heroes in one place for a slaughter. So whose idea was it? You don't know what you're talking about. What heroes? What slaughter? You mean Eritrea? Yes. Yes, well, you should show some respect because you're talking to a man who has lost his city and come to Athens for help. And yet I find myself assaulted. My guard of 15 years killed Insight. <laughs> okay, you can inside check him, sure. Ah, geez. Well, at he least. doesn't know the guard is killed. 14. Yeah, I'm going to say in the. I, knew, I thought you might bring that up, and maybe he wouldn't, so sure. Um, he will assume that he's killed, being that he is here. And um, he saw, I think before he was put to sleep, he saw one of his clerics killed, so safely assuming he's assuming that you've killed his guard. Mm-hmm. So, what was the result of your insight roll? 14. Sure. Um, it's difficult to tell whether he's being sincere or whether he's just misinformed. Mm-hmm. Then would you kindly tell what indeed happened and how did you, exactly did you escape? I was never at Eritrea. I returned after several days and found it in ruins, nary believing the rumors. Oh, you were not in Eritrea for the biggest event of the city in a while. Oh, how convenient. I'm Mm. sure I believe you. Well, what can I say? Didn't take any interest in me. Heroes are pumped up nonsense. Oh, so you hosted an event that you were completely uninterested in. Enough of this. My town has shown me this, and I will cast Zone of Truth, and I'll hit not only him, but I'll hit uh, her as well, and I'll hit 
you know, anyone else that wants oh, to. Oh, right. Uh, I meant punch. I I punch the ground and this like flame ring erupts around the radius of it and, and oh. everyone sweats themselves into a zone of truth. Is it a wisdom save? Charisma uh, save. Charisma save. Okay. We can use the rolls. Yeah. What's this? Is that all of us? Is a fun it? one for Zone of Truth, yeah. Um, oh, oh right. So it's actually a, a 17 and a 23 for them. Well, <laughs> it worked on me. <laughs> Yay. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're compelled. <laughs> You're compelled to tell them the truth. Yep. Can, I, can you uh, not to tell them? Just anything yeah. I speak has to be truthful. Yeah, I know yeah. whether they succeed or fail. All right, seeing it fail, I will do it again. I rolled a, <laughs> I rolled a nat twenty on my save. I'm sad I wasted it on that. Let's see, uh, a ten and a seventeen. The first one's a day. The second one is that's twenty. Yeah. So knowing that he's telling the truth is enough for me. Sure. Can Can you cast it again? What if I get second level spells? Yeah. So you lose two second level spells straight away off the bat. Qu I question DM. I'm arrested and I, I two of them. Can another player use their inspiration for someone else's rock? No. No. Okay. No. <laughs> Fortunately not. Okay. Um, okay, yeah. You feel it as the magic sort of overcome Adeus's stony face and sort of um, his natural resistance to the spell. But the second time it's cast, it does in fact manage to penetrate that and his sort of face gets a lot softer. He looks a bit more bewildered, but you sense that it, this is only too affecting him. Now, why don't you tell me again why you went at Eritrea for the event? I had other commitments. What other commitments did yeah. you have? To meet with an old friend. Who was this old friend? A friend from far away. You wouldn't know his name. Tell me anyway. <laughs> And you, know, you see him struggling against the effects of the spell, and Aspasia will lean in, taking extreme satisfaction in watching this take place, um, watching him struggle and consult his mouth and say, his name's... He was Phyricides, my old friend, an old teacher, but it's nothing to you. You wouldn't know his name. Oh, I know who he is. He'll, she'll, um, he'll scowl across at you and say, what would you know? No, no, no doubt some rumours. Oh, he's been, been dead a long time ago. And, um, this will sort of make him sort of lean back in his chair and say, very well, what does it matter anyway? Who does it matter who I meet with? <clears throat> Adeus, are you aware of the prophecies of the Oracle and do you believe in them? Of course, every, every Greek worth his salt believes in the prophecies of the Oracle. Then know two things. One, I'm also compelled to tell the truth right now. And two, Phericites was prophesied to have killed my friend and the city. If, if, if that's the case, then it's Phericites you should be speaking to. Oh, you are what we have. Oh, we can speak to you. You're his best friend. I'm not his best friend. I know the man. Was Did my you know that this attack was going to happen on Eritrea? I was warned. And you warned no one else? I was warned when I met Phericides. Little chance I had to get back in Eritrea for it to happen in time of a warning. Was it Phericides' idea to host the event? Whose idea was it? It was Phericides who initially sparked the idea that it should be my city that held it. And has he explained to you how he lived so long? No. I did ask if that's the answer. He never mm. told me. You said you went to meet Phyricides. Where? One of the bays where his ship made dock. Same night as the event in Eritrea. I'm confused. He told you to hold the event, but he only arrived and you met him the night the event started? No, I met him many times before. And what was the nature of your relationship? He's a teacher. Teacher of magic. Oh, <laughs> oh of undead magic. I wouldn't know anything of the sort of undead magic. And when he warned you not to go into the city that night, what reason did he give you? 
told me it would be attacked. And why did you let that happen if it's your city? What As other I plans say, did you have? Little chance I had to get back to warn people. Did you want to? Mm, how you military you flask? That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a long time. Oh, it ended, ended 10 oh, minutes ago. Yeah, we got him. 10 minutes. Yeah. 10 minutes, sure. Um, I'll say, uh, um, what was the question? Sorry. Did you want to warn the people in the city? Uh, he says, I was instructed not to. What do you gain out of this? You've lost your city. Promises from Phyricides, power in Athens, a bit more and than a backwater town in the middle of Euboea. I never wanted to be the commander of Eritrea. It was given to me as a clergy after the war. I'd much rather be powerful here. But I see it's ruled by harlots. Now look over to Aspasia. What? A moment. You said you were not in Eritrea because you were traveling to meet Phyricides, but then you said you met Phyricides at the docks in Eritrea. When exactly was the last time you saw him and where? A bay outside of Eritrea is where his ship may dock. Some distance as well. <clears throat> what? Was, was there any siege weaponry? Next? A lot of questions coming at me. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jade. <laughs> uh, was there any siege weaponry? I saw no such siege weaponry on his ship, no. And this was right before the city was to be attacked. I don't know when the city was attacked. I wasn't there. What, are, what were you to do next? What were you instructed to do to gain this power you seek? I was so told... You instruct by to not tell anyone. Phyricides told me to come to Athens and use the fact that my city had been taken to garner sympathy in Athens here with the nobles. Did Phyricides say what he was doing next? I'm smarter than to ask. So he knowingly made a plan with a man who has been banished from Greece in order to exchange for power and favor, knowing you were planned an event in your own city, and he took advantage of you like a school child and whipped you away and now you're still doing his bidding after your city has been sacked i'm an old man orc i haven't got much time left i'll punch him in the face <laughs> yeah. um so yeah this goes up without a hitch and you punch him in the face but he I mean, dies unless you're um unless your intention is to knock him out he will no i i just want him i want it to hurt <laughs> yeah, okay ask steel raise a hand to you and say so, please please Let's keep our tempers here. I don't think he's going to get another city. You sentenced your own to death. Thousands of people died because of you. Yeah. The, or or the Oracle you. died because of you. I had no intention for the Oracle to die. <laughs> you were weak. You were a weak man, and I hope you die a weak man. Oh, it's not over for me yet. Why Please. isn't it over for you dies. yet? Yelling on sheaths her dagger. <laughs> Maybe it's over for me now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Is that what he says? No. no. <laughs> he just looks at dagger and says, For he's always makes good on his promises, and he's promised me power. Well, I don't exactly see Ferricity as here. Yeah. I make good on my promises, and I can promise you death, and she'll walk even closer with the dagger. I suppose she'll say, please, please, there's more information that we can garner from him. Let it have his moment of um, rage at us for our actions. He's owed that at least. And then we can really ask the important information. Oh, and what then did, I can what slip did you want to ask okay. him? Yeah, what do you want to ask him? <laughs> <laughs> my question's much more simple and to the point. Where is Phyricides hiding... That was my next yeah. question. Well, then, we are of the same mind. Where is he hiding? Where does he make his home? And um, he will struggle again, trying out to answer and says, he, he travels from Troy. He's been there since before the war. And um, just say, ah, well, that confirms our suspicions. We expected he was using Trojans in his army. Um, well, thank you very much. That's all I needed to know. And um, 
is there any questions you would like for him before we um take a further actions with got our friend Erdeus? What did he teach you? And um he'll just say, nothing yet. But the power will come in time. He says if my actions were complete, that's when he'd come to me. And what powers did he demonstrate that you desired? And um, he'll just say, magics beyond your comprehension. Beyond yours too, apparently. Mm. He just lets that linger and says, well, uh, what, other, what other things did you do for him? Just simple tasks here and there, pulling certain strings. Nothing too disastrous. Uh, what were you involved in besides Eritrea that he requested? Say, um, certain trade ships to Troy after the war where no one else would dare to go. Eritrea sending food there, sending supplies, but nothing. Eritrea sent food there, but not for the heroes. So you effectively helped him build the army that destroyed Eritrea. You would presume my involvement too much with this man. Simple agreement. Any other leader in Athens or Greece would have done the same if somebody came to them offering a trade agreement. Or the heroes were the food. Well, he didn't deliver any heroes to him. You delivered all of the heroes in Eritrea. Well, that is true enough. Do you know where the food went that you delivered to Troy? I was never on one of the ships. I only sent it to Troy. Do you not know what it was intended for? Who it was to feed? I know it was taken off there by some people, but I never saw them. I never asked questions. Mm. As far as I can tell, you've admitted to uh, becoming a friend of a man who has been banished from Greece, outlawed for years. You were conned by him, and you've admitted this in front of another noble. I imagine that your time, if you are still to live, will be in jail. Mm. Oh, oh, he, he, he was banished 150 years ago. He should have been long dead. Adeus, no. before we go, just know that even if you had become powerful under Phariseties, you would still be weak, like you still are. Ah, spare me your pontification on weakness and strength. I will, my entire and I will stab his hand. Okay, well, and Asmusia will immediately put a hand up and says, Now, that's quite uncalled for. Remove that dagger at once. And she'll reach across to try and pull it from his hand as he just sort of lets out a shriek of pain. I'm done here. Oh, that was rather nasty. Yeah. And she'll reach across and she'll put her hand on the wound. And as she takes it off, the wound is healed. Yarling is gonna <clears throat> gonna stand in front of her with her dagger still out. If this man, which he is telling the truth, has been promised great power, and the man who promised him that always meets it, do you not think it'd be easier to squash him while he's still a little bug and not a powerful being? This man, a powerful being, you said yourself will always be weak. That was not my words. You would prefer to kill him now? Of course. Yes. I would suggest a different course of action. As is so far, this Phrysides of Cyros and Adeus here have fought themselves in control of every act so in, their, in their retinue of horrible, horrible, um, horrible actions. So what say instead of killing poor Adeus here, we let him believe that he is on the right course. Then Phariseides makes himself known and he, he doesn't suspect that we're working against him. Is it so difficult to allow the man to come in and garner some sympathy from Athenians? I control Athens, I and Pericles. We can make sure he can't get any power, but we can make it seem like so far we're not wise to Phariseides' plans. How can you make sure he doesn't get any power? And how can you make sure he does not contact Phariseides? The moment, the moment she looks away to, if she does, to reply to Kara or Pruitt, uh, Yarling is going to slit his throat. Okay, sure. Um, Ooh. <laughs> she looks to, um, she looks to um, I don't know, say uh, Kara to Just explain quickly. Uh, <laughs> Antigonus will try to stop her. No, I gave it the argument. 
Okay. Um, like that'll be if you're trying to stop it, and you can see it happening. I guess we'll have to make contested checks. Yeah. So um, I'll say sleight of hand for Yarling, and maybe um, I'll go with the head with a perception or insight. Your choice for to See it happening before it happens. Yeah. Uh, twenty. Dirty twenty. Damn it. <laughs> so I got a seventeen on the dice, and my sleight of hand is a plus six. Ooh. <laughs> oh, right. Jeez. So that's 23, right? I just want to confirm. Maths. Yeah, that's, <laughs> 20, that's a 23, yeah. Because I didn't quite hear the first number, so 23, yeah. Okay. Um, I will use my on. inspiration die to try to <laughs> stop. <laughs> sure. Can yeah, I use my inspiration die? 18 plus, you both 18 have plus one, I guess. 6 is 24 total. Wow, some good rolls for you guys. Nice. Yes, I'll <laughs> use my inspiration die. Okay. Well, that fuck. No, all right, fine. No. Yeah. Is it, you already it had a twenty-three. A one would die. Anyway, I will. I will grab. I'll oh, grab oh, anyway. wait. Does it go on top of that? No, no. It's no. It's it doesn't add to it. No. Oh, no, yeah. I was gonna say no. Wait. So it's contested then? Is it like they both got twenty-three or? No, I got twenty. No, I 24. got twenty-four. I got twenty-three. Right. And taking this one. Uh, I yeah. So I'm just gonna come behind your arms as you make that move, and I'll just sort of hold you there. I'm not trying to hurt you, but I'm just sort of saying this is not it. Life does not have to end. We simply need to figure out the better plan, Yaling. I feel the same way, but please, please. Aspasia will lean back in her chair and say, if you want to kill him, I, I won't stop you. I just think there's smarter ways to use a dais for our purposes. I agree. I've seen weaker men grow into more powerful people. Swatting them when they are the filthy little vermin they are is the easiest solution. And she'll drop you... her dagger on the floor and she'll go, but if you want him to get power and more lives are lost, let that be on your head. I'm only, I understand your feelings, Johnny. I do really. I, I have been consumed with feelings of anger and revenge before, but consider what he's told, he's told us. He's told us that Ferocity's promises in power if he completes his actions as instructed. And so far he has done. What's to say Felicities won't visit him in Athens if we allow him to continue to live? We can bait the enemy right to us. What's to say Felicities won't contact him from a distance and gain information about who his enemies are? Well, we'll keep a very close eye on our friend Adeus here. Make sure that he's not... More that way, yes. I don't trust this woman. Is there a way I can, like... I'd like to insight her, yeah. <laughs> uh, can I... Can I... Insight. Uh, 18 for me on insight. I want to know how much of this is a desire for personal power and how much of this is a desire to help people. Sure. Mine was a 14. I just wanted to know if, if they're like friends, basically. 14 and 18. As you look at her, um, it's almost as though as you both sort of gauge her response, she can see you gauging her response and she just lets out a coy smile instead. And you don't really glisten much information from her. She rolled the 21, by the way, on her. Yeah, <laughs> All yeah. the charisma there. Yeah. Just like, if you, I, I promise you, my intentions are the best for Athens. And we have a pawn here to play against um, Phrycides. Maybe it's best we don't kill him so hastily, unless you are consumed by your vengeance and would feel great benefit from killing him. But it won't bring the heroes of Eritrea back. It won't. So We are well aware of, aware of this. I do question the plan to keep him alive. I do not think it is a sound one. Yeah. It is and one thing to use subterfuge to attack an enemy. It is another to mix enemies and allies. Yes, but you must understand. Right. I've seen clerics in the temple be able to, to envision, and, and they called it, they scry upon people, see, see they're exactly where they are. If he is dead in the ground or wherever he might be in Felicity's nose, our cover is blown. We lose everything. Antigonus, can you cast another zone of truth? Uh, I can. That's, <laughs> that's all if, I got for the day. <laughs> if this lady is going to... If she's telling the truth, she won't contest. And then she can answer our questions and we won't have to worry. Ah, well, you see, you have me at a disadvantage, dear. You could ask me anything. And I have secrets that don't pertain to this that I'd rather keep under wraps. Hmm. Interesting. I'm going to 
do one more thing. I'm. She's going to, like, pick up... She's not actually... No, she's not going to pick up her dagger. She's just going to draw another one out. Um, okay. <laughs> and she's just going to go... She's going to look at each of the pirates. Final chance. We can squash him now. Or wait. Let's see. will fold her arms and sit back, letting the party make that decision. If we let him live, as you've said, Antigonus Ferocities could scry on him and use him as a pawn to get more information. It's like having a man inside. That doesn't help us. Oh, he won't be able to contact him. No, but he can see what's going on. And Ferocities has already gotten what he needs out of him. If he has not already communicated in some way with Ferocities, I would rather not Ferocities know our identities, given his living. He, He could be bound to a room, made to look like a guest. If we want everyone to think that he's here, why don't we just use magic and someone disguise themselves as him and go into town and make it known that he's here? Word will travel. Ferocities will know, but nobody else will. Exactly. I cannot take a man's life who is not trying to take mine immediately. Well, you don't have to. I'll let go of yelling and I will just walk Mm. away. As we see, I'll look at you, Antigonus, and she'll, again, let out a very sort of deceptive and sly smile, and she said, interesting that you have such high morals, as long as it's not you who are wielding the dagger. Isn't letting her kill him as good as killing him yourself? I do not take away the free will of men. I am not the gods. Hmm. I have a friend you'd like you, Antigonus. You must let me introduce you at some point. I have a titan that you would like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're not quite wrong about that, but... Indeed. Uh, in the meantime, Yarling, please go ahead. If you feel it is the right case of cause of action, you fulfilled your task in bringing him to me. I know where Felicity's is or should be, uh, and that will conclude mm-hmm. my need. Specifically, if, if she's going towards him, I will say to him, "I say, well, it looks like you've got one chance to save your life." And no, yeah, he will say, "If you kill me, Felicity's will deliver vengeance on you tenfold." You think Eritrea was bad? Wait until Athens is in flames, burning to the ground, and all of you dead. He's a fool is that his cares plan? about you. You're a fool if you think that Ferocities cares at all about you. You are just a pawn. This, no, he won't. He won't respond to you. Without any contest, a uh, yarling will do it. Okay. Uh, and he has a strange sort of acceptance of it as well, sort of leaning back and even exposing his throat. As you go over and slit it, you'll just see the red pour out in copious volume, staining the simple brown robes that you've replaced his finer ones with uh, until he just bleeds out and the pool around the tables begins to turn red. And she just says, now ask me this. He just looks at you yelling and say, says, so um, feeling any better? Much so. Good. Well, next time, please try and use a less messy form of murder, because this... Are you cleaning this up or am I? Uh, needle? And and shed the the water to come out! Oh, right. (laughs) That's, uh, you can do that. (laughs) Um, and you have long rested since you used it the first time, so you still can use it, it's once a long rest. (laughs) Uh, yeah, sure. Um, 10 out fluid ounces of water is not enough to dilute blood, so effectively you just make 10 times a worse mess. <laughs> water mixes with the blood and gives the consistency to spread further, and Aspicia just puts a hand on you, Yaling, says, Yaling, yeah, please stop. I, I don't know the stop command for it. Uh, okay, no problem, we can handle this. Uh, and <laughs> she'll just get up and start, like, put, she'll um, take a spare cushion and sort of trying to stem the flow, break water, the blood, before it goes underneath the curtain. And she's like, can we please, anyone, help me with this? <laughs> okay, I'll use precipitation. Um, okay, good. As you start <laughs> to clean up the blood. Uh, and, you know, like, and you know, like, there's, like, there's like, uh, like uh, brooms, brooms, like mops come out and start. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, casting prejudice station multiple, multiple times will eventually clean up the blood until it stops flowing from this guy's neck. Um, but she'll just look across to you and she'll just run a hand through her hair and say, not the most elegant form of killing. Um, perhaps you could just stab him in the chest next time, perhaps. But it's interesting to see your choices. Um, tell me, you, you, you all 
in support of Yaling's actions, or...? Oh, no, not at all. No. What about you? I don't know. You don't know. And you, my dear? And she looked to you, Kara. Uh, sorry, I was muted. I think it was the appropriate course of action, yes. I, um, I kneel down next to Cleo and just sort of... Uh, Cleo's certainly Cleo's not, not in the room. Uh, not, <laughs> not, not, not here. Right. She's not here. Yeah, I was going to get emotional. Never mind. Okay. She was behind him, stabbing him in the back. <laughs> Though she will just kind of twist her hand in the air and place some flowers on him respectfully. Hmm. Well, um, it seems we're having to sneak her body out. Um, we'll make sure he's taken care of and disposed of. Um, but consider this. Now, Frisides knows that we've killed his man here in Athens. And um, so thankfully, you're right. He won't be able to scry on the man or on any of us. Um, next course of action. I, I owe you all a favor. Indeed. Something I can achieve, at least within my capabilities. Um, I, would, I could give you time to decide, or do any of you have an immediate urge? Or I do want the temple restored, yes. And I want Titan worshippers not to be persecuted in Athens or mainland Greece ever again. Not the agreement we had in mind. Titan worshippers will always be persecuted. Prometheus per worshippers, maybe we can allow small leniencies to. Not Titan worshippers, though. You must understand that the Titans are a chaotic race. They are beings of impulse and destruction. And if we had a temple to Kronos here in Athens, well, that would be enough to tear the city inside out. So, unfortunately, I cannot promise you Titan worship. I can perhaps promise you a small shrine to Prometheus in which people are welcome to pay respect to. I will take it, but I'll also remind you that the gods are a chaotic and uh, crazy group of all-powerful beings that do terrible things, but I'll take what you got. That is true, but if you want to have a theological debate, perhaps you best go and speak with some of the clerics. I, however, can promise a small shrine to Prometheus. Maybe a small stepping stone to a larger temple in the future, but for now, let's take baby steps. Is that okay? It's fine. You are most agreeable. I, I do appreciate that. Is there anything else I can help you with? It will take time, of course, to make these things happen, but... Can you help me find a dog? <laughs> you, want a, you, want a, you want a dog? Yes. Yeah, I just don't think that should be a problem. Uh, any any specific could... type? Or... Yes, a particularly charismatic dog. What a peculiar request. A charismatic dog? Yes, please. I will try. You must forgive me that I have a very difficult time gauging the charisma of animals, but because they are stupid beasts and they cannot talk, but I you will try. You are a stupid beast. <laughs> and she'd just laugh at this. <laughs> she'd say, yes, yes, I, I am sometimes. I have been accused of such. Um, I will try and find your dog for you. Thank you. Uh, the rest of you. I will give you time to think if you wish, but do know I owe you a significant favor. Um, something either myself, Pythagoras, or Pericles can achieve. I want a place for my family to live in peace where they can not have to scrounge for money. And I want something in place for people who are less well off in poverty. Interesting. Well, why not combine the two? Perhaps we can open some kind of charitable. Um, Maybe a, if you'd like a temple, if you have any certain gods you worship, we can always open one of those and give you money to support the downtrodden, as is you are owed. We said a monetary investment would be promised, and this would be uh, perhaps a benefit for Athens as well. Would you like them to be in Athens? or? It's safer here, I think. You're from Argos, correct? Yes. Yes, I thought that was strange. And you say you belong to a family of 20-something people. Correct. And you scrounge for money. I assume you have some kind of leader over in Argos who runs your gang. It's not a gang. I dance. You dance, of course. And uh, oh, may I ask... a very good dancer. May I ask the I name of like this person? I would like to insight yelling <laughs> if it is or is not a gang. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so 17 on insight. Totally a mobster. <laughs> can I can I contest this? Um 
Yeah, sure. I mean, if you're trying to roll deception, because if, if all you do is dance, which I don't think it's true. So. Uh, yeah, I, I fail. I rolled a four. <laughs> is it a gang? Um, it's up to you how you actually... Um, <laughs> You know. Does Yaling feel like she's covering up anything? <laughs> it's kind of a it's kind of a criminal gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I figured. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ruben's not going to say anything. Will sort of um, so uh, brush a strand of hair out of her eyes, and she'll sort of um, blink her eyelids a few times before she just smirks. After a few seconds of silence, she says, "And I assume that this person who leads this gang is a name Fastly, by any chance." How, how how did you? Oh, don't worry about how I know. Just know that I know things that you might not expect me to understand. And yes, that's Leah. I know her well. We've spent much time together in the past. But I'd be welcome to, um, in fact, I'd quite rather enjoy seeing her come to me and asking for help. So do send her. And She's of, not asking for help, I am. Of course. But I do look forward to helping her out, whether she likes it or not. I will find maybe that I should do this probably incognito. I'm not sure uh, Fastly will so welcome help from me, but we parted on not fantastic terms. But if I help from a hidden perspective, she'll have no inclination to deny my aid. Is that okay? See, you'll be helping me and I will be helping them. Very well, that's that's negotiable. I can certainly help you and then keep my involvement hidden and then Fastly shan't throw it in your face out of spite. For me, um, this whole thing leaves a bit of taste in my mouth. You can give me the money. You want the I money? request nothing more. Very well. Uh, well. Let's discuss the sum. How much do you think you're right for the task you've, can, you've done? One billion. One <laughs> <laughs> million dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you're talking about me personally or for the group? Well monetary gain or a, a favor I, I would be ill advised to give you all the gold equivalent of what i've already promised except perhaps the dog i can afford that um of course creating a temple to prometheus requires vast amounts of gold creating this um this place for um Thastia's and yarling's family will require vast amounts of gold so i can't give you that and what your favor is i can however give you the gold how much would you like for your involvement 500 gold would satisfy me. Well, let's call it a thousand, shall we? Jesus Christ. Done. <laughs> <laughs> How much um, do I love my Titan? Since my <laughs> dog doesn't cost much. Hmm. You wanted some gold as well? Well, I only asked for a dog. <laughs> That's fair enough, indeed. We can find you a dog, and we can also compensate perhaps the whole party for, let's say, 1,500 gold. Would that be fair? Thank you. 500 in addition to my 1,000 or 1,500 in addition to my 1,000? <laughs> well, we'll call it 1,500 in total, and you can divide it among yourselves. You have other thanks of Athens, and although you shan't be sung as heroes, then you you know that you what you've done here is much more impactful than anything those other six would ever do. Indeed. 1,500 it is. Indeed. Very well. Uh, I just want my memory back. We can work with that, of course. You must speak to Pythagoras about it. I'm sure he can figure out a way to, an avenue for you to regain your memory. But in the meantime, this shouldn't, and she'll motion over to the still sort of tongue lagging from his mouth and um, his neck yawn, still like an open flesh wound on this um, man who's sitting in his seat, completely dead. And she'll say, it is, of course, not the end of three cities of silence. Now, would I be right in assuming that, Yarling, if you're so eager to take revenge upon this man, perhaps you'd be more interested in revenge upon another? This wasn't out of revenge, just out of wit. But sure, why not? Very well. Well, let me tell you this, that Phrysides of Cyros is simply a symptom of a larger problem in the world, something we've been keeping a very close eye on. And there are certain people out there like him you are wielding magic for extremely nefarious means. Now, I propose that we, d- I myself, Pericles and Pythagoras, will deny all knowledge of you as a group and um, this money that you've come across to build these temples is entirely from your own record there, Yarling and Antigonus. And what you can do in the meantime is you can find these people, Phrysides being one of them, and well, bring them to justice or perhaps deliver your own type of justice as Yarding has demonstrated. Um, 
Would like to know who else is involved, yes? Do you have any more information about these nefarious magics? Of course. Kara is very curious now. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Let me explain. But before I do, you must assure me that you're not completely adverse to this idea before I share what is quite heavily guarded information with you. No, we were charged. We protect life. I do, at least. I sort of look at Yaling when I say that. Um, And, uh, yes, I would do whatever I could to prevent this from hurting others. Very well. Well, as I said, Phyrcides of Cyrus is a... Call him a symptom rather than a plague himself. And there is a plague coming. It will reach Athens, as it has reached other places in the world already. Darkness spreads from forests, from mountains, from the sky, from the seas. And from what Pythagoras has told me, it is a symptom of magic becoming wielded by those who do not use it for good purpose. When we had the seven sages of Greece, of course, it was different. They could keep a close eye on this and they could nip these things in the bud, as Yarling has so done here. However... Since they have passed on and their positions remain unoccupied for the most part, we haven't had anybody to travel to these areas where problems are arising and people are gaining more power than they have knowledge to use. Magic should be led slowly and with great responsibility and protection. But instead we have men raising corpses and sending them into towns, which is a problem, of course, we cannot have. Out of the question. For you, example, um, Pruitt, do you think Rome is guarded from these things, these magical influences in the world? I know for a fact that Rome is suffering the plague more than anywhere else nearly in the planet. So, would they say planet? She'll say, in the world. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think she knows uh, Do I know of any plague that she's talking about? I mean, I know she's talking pretty abstractly. I'm yeah, a little more confused about what her meaning is as far as Rome goes. And she'll say, okay, you can ask her. Yeah, um... Rome has not been infected by any plague, as far as I can tell. And it is my opinion that men affect magic, not the reverse. Hmm. Very well. I mean, that, that is a point to be made, yes. What I am saying is that there are people, regardless, out there using magic for ill purposes. And this is as true. it stands right now, there's nobody really to stop them. And in many cases, such as in Rome, they are protected by senators, uh, they are protected by generals. They are protected by the Imperator himself, perhaps. But what we need to do is have people such as yourselves, which operate outside the laws of certain areas that can take care of these people, quietly and without any political affiliation. What about places where they're not protected? Well, then it should could be this, Could this... How, how much damage could they do? Like... Oh, well, let me put it in perspective, shall I? Well, Eritrea is a good example. Eritrea is a place in which there was relative peace. There, sure, there was bandits in the mountains outside, but come one day, everything changed when a man wielding significant power has taken upon himself to impact the very delicate balance of Greece by launching the dead Trojan soldiers and Greek soldiers into the city and wiping out what we can assume to be many promising young candidates would have been heroes but i don't really buy into the hero thing so much but you know I, these people regardless of whether or not you agree with them being heroes they were mortals and they had personalities and souls and they indeed were taken from them when this man for cities of cyros has used his magic field means now that's one example but there is many more you for example cara you're from the uh, the british isles I've, I've read something about it is that right britannia am i saying it correctly yes i'm not from britannia specifically but around there See, well, that's somewhere that um, I understand there is some problem in Britannia right now the Romans are having, and we also perceive this maybe to have something to do with a small group of people, of which for cities of Cyros is one. This nefarious magic you speak of, what do you know about it? Do you know where it comes from? Or? Fortunately, we know precious little. It is only Pythagoras's theory that these people are joined because they happened at very similar times with very similar magics involved. What we're looking at really is people who may investigate this and see if there is anything connecting these people. And this sounds familiar to me. Then does it? 
Oh, what does what sound familiar exactly? Yeah, like what she's describing. Does that sound familiar to Kara? Yeah, I'd say um, if you're looking for ill uses of magic, evil, evil uses of magic, then um, it's the strike familiar of what's going on north of the wall. Right. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Mm -hmm. Do so you have any questions for me? I I feel I've spoken my, my fair share. You must have some questions. So. What specifically would you have us do? Well, first, I want you to investigate the Phrycides of Cyrus. I would like you to go to Cyrus, the Phrycides' home. Uh, we've had information that I hesitate to share with you without a, at least some kind of promise of commitment. That there's something there. I would like to know what the plan is to stop Phrycides. I work stealthily, it is true, but I'm tired of working in the dark and I'm sick of politics. So I would like to stop Phrycides, but I do not like to not know who I'm dealing with and well, what I they are willing to do. Very well, if you wish to understand your foe better, rather than through the masks... I wish to understand you better. If we deliver information to you, what will be done? Well, whatever you wish. That's within my ability. Leave and what is your you. ability? Well, that depends on the nature of the question. I'm not sure. If you ask me to deliver the moon to you, I can obviously sing now. I think what Pruitt's getting at is whether or not you want us to kill this Phrycides, or do you want him to have to own up and pay for things to learn more? Is, is, it, is this a mission to get rid of it, or is it a mission to learn more about the problem? Well, don't be under the interpretation that I'm sending you out with a leash over your necks. You, you will deal with situations as they arise, and if you see fit to kill for a cities of Cyros, then I could see that being beneficial, of course. I leave it up to you. I then give us the information we need to investigate for cities and we will go. Very well. You would plan to travel to Cyros to understand for cities and all? I would wish to, yes. Very well. Well, I have eyes on Cyros, and um, we know... Phrycides returns, or somebody matching his description, returns to Cyrus every month or so for a short visit, a single day perhaps, sometimes as much as a week before he departs again. He travels alone, and he makes himself very hard to spot when he's on the island itself, but it is a small island, and there is only one settlement there. There must be a reason that he's revisiting this place over and over. We've not seen him since Eritrea, of course, so recently, but I suppose if you headed there and you waited, perhaps you could find Phrycides when he's away from his... Mm, I'm not sure what is in Troy, but I assume he's more strong there than he is on Silas. Hmm. How did you uh, spot this pattern? Well... I keep an eye out for interesting figures across Greece, and I can't say that Phrycides of Cyrus has been unknown to us for some time. This merely confirms the suspicions. Mm -hmm. I to say I've been following the man's work for some time. In Can I insight that? <laughs> I'm sure you can insight check her. Yeah. Are you trying to see if she's lying? Yeah. Or? Uh, what interest she has in his work, it's not very good. Uh, 14 insight. That matches hers. So I'll, you say, listen to something. She's very interested in Phrycides of Silas and his magic. Right, but is it. Uh, I guess there's yeah, not really match, much to draw from that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, will you be able to provide. Well, is, is Cyrus. That's an island, right? Yes. Yeah. Will you provide this uh, means of getting there? In a the boat? Hook. Indeed, yes, I can book you passage to Cyrus. Um, I must ask, of course, that you deny knowledge of my involvement, Pericles' involvement, and Pythagoras' involvement. I plan to take the role of the fawning over the hero's character. I will support them as much as I support you. I will then send them gold, I will send them gifts, only to encourage the idea that I have been fooled by Phrycides of Cyrus. I am happy to play the fool. Very well. Does anybody else have any questions? When will we meet you for this journey? I won't be going, of course. I have matters to attend to here in 
Athens, but mm. if you wish, I can book you passage to Cyrus, perhaps two days from now, from from uh, Piraeus, the port. Um, and then out of out of character, but how long would it take to to get Cleo back to Argus? <laughs> oh, like um, maybe at there and back a week. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. But with a yeah. teleportation circle that was offered, we might. Be... Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Zip zap zop um, our way there. Sure thing. Um, which is good to bring up. Um, Would some of us be able to use the um, uh, teleporting magic to get to um, Argus in the meantime? Well, of course, all of you, if you wish. Yes. That is what um, we wish. W- will I be able to have access to a library? If you wish, you get access to a library. And... Well, to. to um... What's his, what's, his, what's his name for Agar- Pythagoras. Pythagoras' library for spells and stuff. Yeah, I'll say, she'll say, that's something you'd have to discuss with him, I'm afraid. Oh, well, you that, can that, ask him when. That, that'll be my request. Very well. We'll see how you respond. My favour. Yeah, so just out of character, Prabhupada's going to get information of when to go to the teleportation circle, uh, yeah. where to meet, you know, just all the nitty gritty, and then we can go. Yeah. Sure thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you will be told that the teleportation circle is as simple as going to um, Pythagoras and asking him to do so. Um, okay. And where he lives then, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, he'll find out Pythagoras' is home and stuff. So um, the ship to Cyros won't be booked until you guys have a definite date you want to go on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this one, so. I look at, yeah, at Kara. We also have a play that we need to see. <laughs> Indeed we do. And I have a dog I need to catch, so... If you have... <laughs> I have... So, um, Herodotus has had some visions of the Acropolis. Do, could you give us any further information on that? The Acropolis is very large. It's a citadel. It's a temple to Athena. It's where we store all of Athens' funding and finance. I, I can't really tell you much more. You can is visit it. It's heavily you... guarded. It is one of the most heavily guarded places in all of Athens, but it's open to the public. There's, you're welcome to visit if you wish it to worship Athena or to, but simply to take in the sights. There is no better view of Athens than from the Acropolis itself. Primarily, it's for the only view of Athens where you can't see the Acropolis itself. It's quite an eyesore, I find. So. I had a dream of the place. And many Athenians do dream of the Acropolis. It is a beautiful, well, in their regard, a beautiful landside. It's a, in this case, we think it might be connected to his memories. I see. I wish I could help more. Did, is, was there anything more specific? Or oh, I've got to find a door. And she'll look to each of you and she'll open her mouth like... Does anybody know what he means by this? Or... Oh, it's, it's like a magical door. Again, I'm... <laughs> I'm... Hey, I'm... Hi. I'm drawing a blank. You must assist. I'm sorry. I, a magical door in oh, the Acropolis. Perhaps your friend Pythagoras could help with this oh, question yes. better. I'd like so. to hear more about Pythagoras' theorem. <laughs> <laughs> Pythagoras' theorem is a heavily guarded secret, and I'm surprised you've heard of it at all. But you mentioned I... it earlier. You said that Pythagoras had a theory about the magic, and I was I thought ah. I would be interested in learning. Yeah, you mean that theory? Yes. Forget I mentioned anything else about it. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't like it. Like I let it go a little while, and it felt bad. But it was, it was such a serious. Thing, so I had to like come back to it at some point. So. Do not ask him about his theory because um, it is his most closely guarded secret. More powerful, he says, than any magics he's framed up before. Even I am not sure it is. Indeed. Well, I think that answers many of our questions. We could try to go there tomorrow, and then uh, let us later. schedule this uh, journey to Cyrus. Uh, for four days ahead, not two. Oh, very well. Four days. I can book it if you're not back in time, of course. No harm done. We'll just mean more time. We're not sure when Frisides will visit Cyrus, but assuming things haven't changed from his schedule before the attack on Eritrea, then he should be along there in somewhat two weeks. Mm. Good. Well, with if there's no other questions, uh, let's head out for the night. There you are. I bid you all good luck in your journey to Argus, and I look forward to your return. You'll uh, excuse me if I don't meet you when you're returned to Athens, but do visit the docks and ask, we'll say, 
before a journey to Cyros, courtesy of not my name, say courtesy of Athena. Hmm. I'm sure the dock worker will know what you're talking about. But very well. I'll go and fetch a dog. I will have it brought to you. Car. An incredibly charismatic and cute dog, please. Charismatic and cute, as requested. Yes. I will try my best. In the meantime, expect to see changes around here, both Yarling and Antigonus, as I get to work making your establishments appear in Athens. Okay. Yeah, so with that, the, the group will head out for the night. Um, Pruitt does turn around to the group and say, tonight or tomorrow morning, I would like to talk to everyone away from prying ears. I think that's wise. I don't really trust that woman. Yes. Well, let's take a stroll outside Athens briefly then before we sleep for the night. With that, Pro will lead the group to the gates, outside, away from people. Yeah. I do not trust this woman, and I do not like working for her. I do think Phericides is a threat, but when politicians speak of vast, incons- incomprehensible evils, it is usually manipulation. I know nothing of the politics but the evil of which she speaks exists. Hmm. I've seen it in my people. Well, don't get me wrong. I would like to investigate, but I don't like doing it for her. Well, it does sound like we're fighting on the same side. Yes, Agreed. but the method of fighting also matters. I'm, so, I'm sorry to say, but what happened in there was hasn't, it was bloody and it was cruel it hasn't sat we should have you. questioned him on the road and made a judgment there when he had the ability to fight it was not cruel maybe not Happily, considering what he has done city of people die he would have done it again a man that's power hungry if he wouldn't have been bound and he had any skill in combat he would have tried to kill us all where we stood I, I may have just murdered a man who couldn't defend himself, but I have saved God knows how many lives from doing so. Oh, I, agree I agree with you, my dear. It was, it was more the fact that we could have used him more for our benefit. I agree with the fact that he should have been killed, the yelling. I only question killing people in the dark without any, any law, any... Any system, any order. If we are going to kill all the people that deserve it, the world will become a chaotic place very quickly. It is one thing to fight a man on the road and approach him knowing what he has done, but what we do is something else. In the past few days, we've been working in the dark, and don't get me wrong, I work by stealth. That is my trade. I'm a scout and I'm an assassin. But I do not like the politics of what's going on. Damn the politics. We've let's just at this point in time, their goals align with ours. We follow the same path. If at any point that is no longer the case, we can break from them from this political nonsense. I disagree, Kara. We do not know if we share the same path because she will not tell us. I She's interested you... in Ferocity's work. She would not say why. So we make it our plan to try to take him out before she can study it further. I would agree with this plan. I do plan on going to Cyrus. I would like to find Ferocity's. And if need be, I would like to go to Troy and fight him there. But in look first, attack second. And, uh, and if there is a darkness in your home, Kara, then yes, let us investigate that too. I, but I do not like doing it for her. Once we are done going to Cyrus, I do not wish further contact unless we need it. That's fine. I don't care about her or her politics, but I traveled a very long way mm-hmm. searching for answers to this very problem. 
And at this point, she seems to have at least some help in that regard. That is true. She has resources. We could use them. She pointed us in the right direction. She asked the question that was needed to be asked. And at this point, I'm fine with it. I do not mean to stand in the way of anyone else's choices or their destinies. I simply have a, a personal code. I don't try to impose it necessarily. Yaling, I am sorry for holding you back. I do not think it was the right decision, but I also do not hold a grudge against you for it. Good. Because the I way you the... looked at me and that was not flattering. Well. At this point, the man is dead. We should move on. This is true. Um, I believe it's late. We've already rested once, but maybe perhaps we should just rest again and try to get off in the morning. I don't really have any other errands for the night. I think perhaps tomorrow we could maybe check out the Acropolis, see if we can help Herodotus a bit. If we can loosen some of those memories, he may be more help in the fights to come. Agreed. We can split up and do our separate tasks so we can do everything together. I think Cleo takes a priority at the moment, but um, regardless of what happens over the next few days, um, I would just like you all to know that you have been very good friends to me, and I appreciate that. And if you need me, I will help. Let's all go right. sleep. And with that, the party <laughs> dedicated to a set of goals, different things, dogs, <laughs> uh, magical doors in uh, the Acropolis, getting Cleo home, going to Cyrus. There's plenty to choose from the next session. So looking forward to that. But that's where we'll call it for this week. <laughs> and we'll rejoin the party next week to see how they handle the intricate politics of Athens or do their best to get away from them. Mm-hmm. <laughs>